Thank you, Steve. Well, amidst the darkness, the two teams will soon emerge here at the Riverside. It's a sellout crowd. I'd echo the thoughts of Steve as well about terrific support from Chelsea. They've sold out their allocation. 3,000 of those fans have made the long journey up from, from London over on the, uh, on the far side as the, the Middlesbrough team too kick back rings around the riverside and the atmosphere for this two-legged semi-final I have to remind myself that earlier on as well if the chances are this will be the last two-legged semi-final this week because of the changes that are likely to happen next year yeah and it's such an unusual thing and the two legs are important you know I think Chelsea are very fortunate had they you know had the first leg at home I think it's going to be a bit more difficult for them but you know it is a different dynamic to it and you have to understand that it is the game 180 minutes but you can lose it if you do not turn up in this first leg so yeah very important for two teams to, to be absolutely at it right at the start of this game it will be a major change to the competition the new format I should hasten to add is yet to be finalised but the mosaic in the end away towards our right hand side they formed a red and white checkerboard and then you've got the Chelsea supporters as we just sweep around from right to left and after those 3,000 Royal Blue Chelsea fans in that far side a lot of the Middlesbrough fans have held their red and white scarves aloft as they break from the team photos and these are the two sides Middlesbrough all in red Tom Glover is in goal they're going to play with the back three Rav Vandenberg, Dale Fry and Lucas Engel Isaiah Jones and Alex Van Gogh will be the wing backs right and left respectively. Dunbar Lasser and Johnny Housen in the midfield with Hayden Hackney and Matt Crooks trying to support Emmanuel Latte La. So that's four changes from the team that lost to Aston Villa here at the weekend by a goal to nil. Chelsea eventually got going in the FA Cup at the weekend. They laboured somewhat in the first half but eventually they beat Preston 4-0 and three changes have been made from that team. Thiago Silva comes in for Gilchrist, Gallagher for Broya, and Madueka for Mudrik. So Petrovic is in goal, Gusto, Thiago Silva, De Sassing and Colwell, Caicedo, Fernandez and Gallagher, with Madueka, Sterling and Cole Palmer. And we'll wait to see how Chelsea line up. I got a feeling that Cole Palmer may be the one because I mean, Ken's gone past. You know, he has played that. He's, he's so intelligent he can play as a you know, as a chain striker you know not going to go up against two centre backs or three centre backs in this occasion which will give Chelsea complete dominance in that central midfield area I think Pochettino likes to do that now and again look at the opposition who are set up to play against either one or two strikers and then not give them one and uh, on top of that Graham Sterling standing on the left hand side so uh, the referee is Sam Barrot as a reminder, there is no VAR, and there'll be no VAR tomorrow night for the second semi for Liverpool Fulham as well, because the Football League wants to maintain fairness and consistency, so it will not be used in any of the semi-finals. Chelsea lining up in their chain strip, it's a, a darker shade of their royal blue, but Middlesbrough will be a team to get us underway. They're playing from left to right, and as we predicted, Pat Nevin, the Riverside is rocking come kickoff. Yeah, and I just hope you don't ask me what's the most the best atmosphere I've been to this week because Sunderland, followed by Middlesbrough, followed by Newcastle the weekend. I'm seeing nothing because I live nearby. I should say as well that uh, it's very hard to work out the cost of Middlesbrough starting eleven because a number of their signings were undisclosed and maths wasn't my strong point. So this is a conservative effort and I've rounded down rather than rounding up, but I worked out that this Chelsea starting lineup is four hundred and two million pounds. Is that all? <laughs> I was expecting a lot more to be honest. Given that Todd Bowley in three windows so far has spent over a billion pounds, yeah, but the atmosphere is a good one, but that's uh, that's a rough estimate. Yeah, I know, and it's a long one, yeah. Obviously, Borough are going to spend, but if you have a look at the bench as well, Chelsea have got a few hundred million they can bring on as well, particularly with Mudra. So we're underway. You're listening to BBC Radio 5 Live. We're also live on BBC Sounds. Middlesbrough all in red, playing from left to right as Barlasa switches play and angles straight away. The Dane will get the ball out towards Bangura, the, uh, the left wing back. It's a system that they'll be quite fluid. They'll use the three at the back, but at times the, the wing backs will drop in. They put up a terrific display against Aston Villa at the weekend, so much so that really Unai Emery had to bring off a lot of his big guns in the end to try and force 
as we saw the opportunity and this is uh, Latte Lap who just couldn't get the shot away right foot and it was a comfortable save by Petrovic and in fact Latte Lap has stayed down well, he might have picked up an injury he might have done he was tackled in the box and that's one if there was VAR they may be having a look at that right now I mean Disassi's come in there really Colville's mistake um, Stuart and I were talking before the game saying about full backs you know certain backs that move out there because they're not used to position it's a terrible mistake wasn't it right? Colville he, he heads it back straight into the danger area and we're having do you know what if you look at that on VAR I think that he, I think he gets a penalty yeah. I honestly do I think people complain about it but does that see, does he get in the ball nope does he get the player yes but the ball's away that doesn't matter yeah. the story is if you hit a player and you don't get the ball it's a film well Latte Lap is still getting treatment we've got Stuart Downing also uh, alongside us here in the, the commentary box what are your feelings Stuart yeah I think it's a bit clumsy it looks like a penalty to me like I said VAR they would probably be looking at that and giving it but sloppy start from Colwell like me and Pat said in the, in the company before and he's probably uncomfortable and he probably knows Isaiah Jones is a threat to him it's a very nervy start from him so if I'm Michael Caddick I'm in, encouraging Isaiah Jones you know keep keep getting at him if you get the ball make it uncomfortable for him and make him defend do you know what I'm looking at that there that's not even a difficult call is it no. that's, that's a pretty clear penalty kick to me Chelsea have got very very lucky indeed and you know if you get a penalty kick we're almost certainly a yellow card as well well Latte Lap is, uh, is back walking play is back underway it's nil nil two minutes in it looks like he's going to be able to uh, to continue as uh, Gusto at the back in front of the Chelsea support and now with uh, De Sassi to Thiago Silva and so Fernandez drops a little bit deep and passes the ball back Chelsea supporters in great voices you might well be able to hear Latte La still waits to come on he's just having a word actually with, uh, with Michael Carrick to the, uh, to the right of the halfway line in that tiny technical area down below Sterling collects the ball on this near side BBC Radio 5 live three minutes in nil-nil in the early stages Caicedo Latte La is back on the field of play as here is Gallagher now to Sterling Sterling who runs at Jones and tries to cross the ball but then it'll be dealt with by Johnny Housen and then they've given the ball back away Gallagher finds Enzo Fernandez. Sterling I think since he was in an offside position the ball goes out of play for a, for a goal kick when I saw Gallagher with these ripped socks uh, and I mentioned it oh Latte Lap has gone down doesn't look like he's able to continue so the uh, referee has stopped play once again and I mentioned it um, it was in the November when they were up at Newcastle and then you text me to say it's nothing new you've seen it before yeah and there's quite a few players around the world that are actually using it just now and you see it quite a lot um, I think it's just a lot about freedom for your cast some players feel that um, but certainly if you feel more comfortable you do whatever you have to do I feel really sorry for Burrow at the moment I mean they, they don't get a penalty and they may well lose a centre forward this early on if he's gone down again there it's, you, know, you don't like getting those sort of knocks early on in any game on a freezing cold night it's just that much worse isn't it it's horrible well the other thing as well is that uh, as you know Stuart Michael Carrick's missing about 12 first team players at the minute this is another one to add to the list yeah it's just getting worse and I think obviously the way Middlesbrough want to play as well he's going to be a miss like that because he's got pace to go in behind Josh Corbin's a little bit different obviously more of a target man he works hard really really hard but I just think they're going to miss that threat of Lattie Lack going in behind so big blow for Middlesbrough and like I said another injury to the list it's just getting bigger and bigger yeah it's uh, an early setback uh, Greenwood is uh, ineligible their recent signing as well from, uh, from Aston Villa is also uh, ineligible because he'd uh, fin his ass because he'd played for uh, for Plymouth and uh, Rogers, who played against Fuller at the weekend is uh, suspended because he picked up two yellow cards the second yellow card against uh, Port Vale uh, Michael Carrick said that uh, it was harsh although that yellow card was actually his fifth of the season against Port Vale so if the yellow cards hadn't been added to the uh, to the League Cup he'd have actually missed the game against West Bromwich Albion where he scored the only goal of the game here is Cole Palmer shoots blocked by Glover the keeper was straight at him it was hit low and left footed and uh, Glover made the save he made a number of fine saves against Villa at the weekend now Middlesbrough pick it up Barlasa defensive midfielder over the halfway line tries to hold off Gallagher forced out wide on this right hand side back underway five minutes play and Josh Coburn has, uh, has come on he you might recall scored the extra time winner against Tottenham when Chris Wilder was the manager a couple of years ago in a fifth round FA Cup tie but a, a completely 
different type of player as Stuart Downing was saying but he will be a willing runner and he's made that run won't necessarily have the same pace but he'll have the physical presence as he puts pressure on De Sassi in the penalty area going to require the support and Crooks does that arrives a fraction late out of play for a throw pass De Sassi doesn't look completely comfortable does he you know put under a little bit of pressure for the second time different centre forward now doesn't look that comfortable on the ball and I think uh, his teammate Thiago Silva stand beside him maybe calm him down a little bit he, he is young you know and he's he just doesn't look that comfortable on the ball the way but maybe if you play alongside Thiago Silva nobody looks particularly comfortable on the ball I think he's still wincing actually from uh, whether it was a reducer from uh, from Crooks he just caught him a, a fraction late but uh, here is Thiago Silva one of the changes that Maurizio Pochettino has made as he stands with his arms folded in that technical area Chelsea haven't started at the minute as the ball is given away by, uh, by Middlesbrough ball played forward and that was quickly intercepted by, uh, by Engel and now it's with Hayden Hackney this highly rated young midfielder and Captain Middlesbrough for the first time at the weekend what an honour that must have been for the uh, for the Red Galad as here he is now free kick is taken quickly Middlesbrough trying to keep the ball moving in these early stages BBC Radio 5 Live we're at Anfield tomorrow night but here we are at the Riverside as uh, Hayden Hackney in that advanced role holds off Gusto ball is played forward Bangura on that far side Crooks and Coburn waits might reach Jones bobbles away from him the repeating for handball as it popped up and might have struck the hand of Enzo Fernandez. and Gallagher clears it out towards that far play far side kept in play Gusto towards Madawaka out of play Middlesbrough started well Pat yeah very very well indeed getting the ball in quickly you know a couple of half chances there yeah, bunch you out for a penalty kick again but on top of that it's the comfort on the ball the way they played out from the back real belief in themselves as a football team and uh, at the moment by some distance and I know it's early days <laughs> better say they kept their compact they kept their, their shape well against Aston Villa they uh we're looking to try and strike on the break. Maybe the dynamic is a little bit different for a two-legged semi-final, particularly at home for the first leg, because ideally Middlesbrough do need to take something with them to Stamford Bridge in a fortnight's time. But it's certainly been a, an encouraging start that they've made eight minutes in. Here is Hackney. Housem, vastly experienced midfielder, formerly of Leeds and Norwich. Crooks, near side the right, back towards Jones. Jones tried to cut it back towards Hackney and cleared away by Chelsea. Fry plays it to Vandenberg who is this uh, Dutch youth international they signed in the summer who really is meant to have high hopes for, uh, for the 19 year old the, uh, the coaching staff say that he's a real talker he's a leader despite his tender years as he's on the ball now and he passes the ball to Isaiah Jones right side and it goes straight towards the feet of Colwell Bagel ball in field Fernandez to Thiago maybe Chelsea will just want to try and settle things down Pat yeah tactically at the moment uh, Borough are winning this quite easily they're finding real gaps the way Chelsea are playing most of the time it's like a 4-4-1-1 four, four, one, one. Gallagher being the one behind Cole Palmer up front but they're not getting the ball up front to Cole Palmer he's got it once and he's got a shot away but apart from that a little bit rattled but you expect that you know home ground for Borough they're going to start a real lick they have done that just now and you're absolutely right Chelsea have to slow it down a bit get everybody a little touch of the ball you know you said earlier that I reminded you of one of the worst days of your career yeah <laughs> for I'm all for fairness and balance and consistency a little bit like the football league can I remind you of one of your more better moments in your career was that one because in this it was this competition that you actually made your debut for Chelsea against Gillingham in 1983 I, th I thought we were going to top of the third round of the school and all the head kicks and, <laughs> and equalised but never mind this will do that will do here is uh, Sterling Sterling with a cross from the left hand side Fry repels it with a head brought down by Colwell left corner of the penalty area I was trying to keep it relevant with the league cup <laughs> um, um, Kerry Dixon scored all four goals that day yes and the away I guess yes and you made your debut yes yes I thought you were down. Long, it, no, it's a long time ago. <laughs> I can't really remember. I think I was going to get a gig the next night. I had that in my mind. That doesn't surprise me. Ten minutes in. Nil-nil. We've got Pat Nevin and Stuart Downing with us here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Ball played forward by Enzo Fernandez. Bouncing ball caught by the 
fair-haired Australian international goalkeeper Tom Glover who said it was a mutual decision that he didn't go away on uh, international duty because of course they, uh, they, they're missing the, uh, the normal goalkeeper Senna Dieng with, uh, with Senegal with African Cup of Nations so it's an opportunity for, uh, for Glover to try and stake a claim for the number one goalkeeper's jersey he looks pretty confident, doesn't he? Yeah. He's very, very confident with the ball. His feet so far has looked really good. At no point does he want to play it wrong. And even though Chelsea are trying a little bit of a squeeze here, and it's not a full squeeze, but certainly uh, Galka, we know that he'll chase everything. And Cole Palmer up front, he's trying to chase it as well. We don't mind. They feel as if they're good enough to play it from the back. And as I say that, he'll probably dump it wrong. Well, the poise, and in <laughs> fact, he does exactly that. But it's a more of a floated ball towards Crooks with a little flick. Didn't quite come off. Brought down by the five Colwell. Fernandez then back to De Sassi, ten yards inside the Chelsea half. Who play from right to left as we look. Eleven minutes played, and it's still goalless. And Middlesbrough have had some promising moments, but neither goalkeeper has had a shot to save so far as the ball goes long. But Stewart Glover did well against Villa, didn't he? Made a number of fine saves. Man of the match, in fact. Yeah, and one in particular from, from begin. I think he, this end uh, to the right, he, he tipped it over the bar. It was a magnificent save. And like I say, since he's came in the team, he's been really confident, and he's he suits, if you like, Michael's way of playing. Playing up on the back, he's very comfortable. And I think when you keep us like that, you know, defenders gain confidence in that as well, don't they? So, yeah, he's, he's had a really good couple of games, and you know, hopefully that continues as well. well he began his career at, uh, at Tottenham. He moved as a young Australian to London 10 years ago, and here he is making only his 12th appearance as Bangura just outside the centre circle. Battles for the ball, they lose out. Madawaka now comes forward. Gusta will go on the overlap. The ball is played forward. But in fact, it was uh, an outstretched leg from uh, Lucas Engel that diverted it behind for a corner kick to Chelsea. That's interesting. Watch Madureke when he gets the ball. He's only got one thing in his mind. He wants to go and take on a defender. He wants to get speed up as quick as he possibly can. And uh, he is one of those ones. There's quite a few wingers around at the moment. They get the ball and they stop. He doesn't. He gets the ball and he goes. He uh, drives forward. He, of course, also began at, uh, at Tottenham before... He went off to uh, to PSV Eindhoven, the England and a 21 international. He's currently just loitering, unmarked outside the D of the penalty area. As are, in fact, four Chelsea players because Middlesbrough have every red shirt inside their penalty box. It's a corner kick, far side, the right. There was just a slight delay because Gusta was tying his bootlaces. In it comes now, it's an in-swinger. And actually, Fry gets a clatter on the back of the head from his own goalkeeper as he heads it behind. It's going to be a successive corner for uh, Chelsea which uh, Cole Palmer is going to go and take over on that, that far side. It's a good delivery. Ask questions of that very concentrated area as Middlesbrough have every red shirt back. Nil-nil in this first leg of the first of the semi-finals of the League Cup competition. Palmer again with another in-swinger. And Housen got in front of his own goalkeeper there as it's volleyed back in by Gallagher but it's uh, off target and it will be uh, a goal kick quality of the corners were very good there I mean real pace whipped in I mean the keeper gets uh, to the second one there but we hate that for a goalkeeper it's low it's just over the, the first man and it's zipped in it just needs to touch anyone defender or forward and it's a real dangerous one I was speaking to Mark Schwartz who actually ahead of the game and we were just talking about goalkeepers and he says that catching the ball is actually a dying art now for a keeper yeah. I mean I know Obviously, he wasn't helped there by his own player. But it's something that you don't tend to see as much as you used to do, is it? Uh, absolutely. Tim's gone past it. The keeper punched it in the situation there. It was in his own six-yard box. You say, what are you doing? You know, take the pressure off. He's catch the ball. And we can get control of it again. But it's a secondary thought. 14 minutes played. Nil-nil. And after what had been a positive start by Middlesbrough, Chelsea have spent a lot of the time in these last few minutes in the Middlesbrough half. And they've got a free kick. It's a few, few yards in from the right touch line. It's knocked short by Palmer to Madawaka. Madawaka then cuts the ball back towards Palmer. He pulls it back. And then before it can reach Enzo Fernandez, it's clattered out of play by Housen and out for a throw. It's just uh, almost by as most as Chelsea have come, started to dominate the game a little bit more. They've not done anything particularly special. They've just moved the ball slowly up, pushed Middlesbrough back, and they have naturally went a little bit deeper than I think they would feel comfortable with. And, uh, they, should, they have to try and get on the ball again because for the first 10 minutes there, they were so comfortable on the ball, but a quarter of an hour played. Up it goes to Sterling, knocks it back with his head to Gallagher, tries to shield the ball away from Housen, plays it back out to Sterling, left side level with the area. Sterling now has got the run of Gallagher instead he passes the ball back to Colwell forward ball Gallagher with his back to goal now with Colwell he's just drifting into a 
central area. Now it's with De Sassi. Opens it up and switches play out towards the Chelsea right. Gusto gets it back from Madawaka. Gusto now with Madawaka. Midway through the Chelsea half. Short, sharp passing from Chelsea. Middlesbrough have every red shirt back behind the ball. Back it goes to the centre circle. Thiago Silva looks up. Forward ball. Madawaka just popped up away from him. Now Coburn with a layoff for Middlesbrough. Hackney tried to return the ball. And in fact it does succeed in doing that. And Bangura. But because the pressing of Cole Palmer. They go back towards the goalkeeper Tom Glover. And uh, Middlesbrough now will build from the back. With Bangura. He's been closed down by Madawaka. He's been forced back. Engel now will hit it long. Looking for that run of Coburn. And in a minute, Middlesbrough now are just struggling to get hold of the ball. Bit of a difference though, because you've got a different uh, centre forward up there who he's had something slightly different, but the pure pace that Lathi Lathi had, you know, pushed the Chelsea back a bit, does Asi had that real difficult challenge on him? And also, you know, Thiago Silva for the great player he has, he's not lightning quick, but they've not got that anymore. Foul from Manawaka on Bangura as he was just played in on that, uh, that right hand side. Um, they are missing Rogers through suspension. Well, yeah, I, I, I think his hamstring's gone. I absolutely think it's gone. He has not budged. Well, that would be a, a real blow as well. What? And straight away he went for it, didn't he, Clutch? So they've already lost Latte Laugh. Now to lose Bangora. Stewart, I wonder if Michael Carrick's run over a black cat on his way to the riverside. He must be pulling his hair out. I mean, like I said, they had a promising start and have lost two important players straight away in the first, was it, 21 minutes, um, 16 minutes, sorry. So, yeah, it's a blow. I think that, that's probably a big of a blow because, like I said, the way they wanted to play, he's pacing behind these defenders and in the channels. And now they've obviously got Colburn, who's more like, direct and up to him, and they're struggling a little bit to get out. But that's another big blow for Michael. Like, like I said, it's, it's another one to the injury list, and um, it's sort of... The team's picking itself, I think, at the minute. But you, we're you, two former pros here. We've written them off right away, haven't we? Yeah. Thank you. We've just went, went, oh, don't like that. No, I don't like the look of that one. It's, uh, yeah, just another blow from the legacy. Like it's another important player. Uh, he's probably going to be missing for a while now. But if you look at the bench, there's only really three experienced players there. In Matt Clark, I, I, I used Coburn as one of them, even though he's still relatively young, and Lewis O'Brien coming back from an ankle injury. The rest of them are all youngsters. So I can only imagine that Matt Clark will come on, and then Engel would go as a left wing back yeah. but then Engel doesn't provide you with the same attacking intent that Bangura would yeah, your sort of plan's got the wind it's, uh, it's not ideal but even Matt Clark you've got to be careful with him he's been out a very long time um, I know he's come back and done really well but you know, like I say so many games in so many days for him coming back after such a long period you know, you're taking a big risk with him that's maybe why he didn't start the game so yeah you've got to be, you've got to be careful Middlesbrough here I think you're right I think there was a, a great deal of concern about Matt Clark who's, uh, this is only what will be his 10th appearance uh, he came back in November after 14 months out with a, a back injury in fact he required surgery on that back problem but Pat you called it Bangura straight away unable to continue I don't know why he's going to try and walk all the way across the pitch <laughs> it's going to take him about 5 minutes it's going to make it a bit worse so they've, uh, they've lost and the other thing as well is that they've been forced now into two changes so they've only got one more opportunity now yeah. to make another change yeah. unless of course they could, they've got another one a free hit at half time but apart from that during the actual game time they've only got one more change to make further changes despite having nine on the bench so uh, the problems are really adding up for, uh, for Michael Carrick at this early stage uh, so it will be Clark who's going to be coming on they signed him from, uh, from Brighton but very early Early on in his Middlesbrough career, he picked up that back injury that forced him out for, for 14 months. So he will then go alongside Dale Fry and Rav Vandenberg, and Lucas Engel will play as a, as a left wing back. And already, you can't help but think that Middlesbrough have lost two attacking options. Back there. They have done, but again, if you make a character looking at the right, try what positives can I get here? You've got another fairly experienced centre back going to come on. You're going to be hopefully a little bit stronger there. You will hopefully then create maybe fewer chances, but you may give fewer chances away because you've got that extra defender on there who's not going to be playing forward. So the ball headed Matt Clark comes on. 
and I'm sure that he will pass on the instructions to, uh, to Lucas Engel who uh, when they sign him he's a, he's a Dane he can either play the left back in fact le left midfield but he has been slotting in on the left of the centre and there that is that swap so that is exactly what has, has happened 20 minutes in uh, Middlesbrough have been dealt with two injury setbacks as it remains nil-nil and uh, still neither goalkeeper yet to be tested the, uh, the return leg is in a, in a fortnight's time tomorrow Kelly Cates presenting from Anfield for Liverpool against Fulham uh, like this is an 8 o'clock kickoff, and then the commentaries this weekend we've got Newcastle Manchester City with John Murray and Pat at St James's Park at half past five and then two on Sunday Everton against Villa at two Manchester United against Tottenham at half past four but this is the Carabao Cup and the League Cup now in its 64th season as the ball goes back to Vandenberg now the goalkeeper out towards Clark early pressure from Madawaka just steps to the side finds Engel and now looks for the run of, uh, of Coburn the flag had been offside anyway it just triggered it had, uh, had young Josh Coburn 21 years of age I'm, I'm, I'm saying that he's one of the senior pros he's only made just over 50 appearances in his, his young career he just shows you um, one of the interesting things you often see the cliche alert for football that if you're a lower league team you're playing against a top league team you won't get that many chances you need the luck to go for it they've got no luck whatsoever so far butter two players off and a penalty they should have got nothing going for them Middlesbrough nil Chelsea nil we've got Pat Nevin and Stuart Downing as company here at the Riverside as Chelsea with Thiago Silva edges his way in towards the centre circle outside of his right boot finds De Sassi now towards Madawaka Gusto thought about on the overlap but stayed behind him now gets the ball and passes it back towards De Sassi Middlesbrough have have dropped off Thiago Silva short to Caicedo back with Thiago once more then collects the ball back from Enzo Fernandez. Palmer in a deep roll Enzo Fernandez out towards Colwell passes it forward on this near left hand side towards Sterling Vandenberg tried to stop it Sterling might just have just hopped a little bit there whether he's picked up a little bit of a niggle we'll try and shake that off as Chelsea with Gusto Madawaka far side the right comes in between two Middlesbrough players and he's actually stopped between Hackney and Engel as a combination but Chelsea try and win it back and then it bounces off the shins of, of Hackney you can see Middlesbrough don't really want to give a great deal away they don't want to come out and lose their shape at this stage yeah. um, well their shape's changed that's the thing um, they really are a little more like a back four to me just now and that actually might help Jones a little bit because he's playing you know, less of a wing back and you know, he's now and again he'll maybe get a little bit further up the field get the ball in the last third because that's I'm sure that's what he would like to get. Here is uh, De Sassi. Gusto. Gusto waits midway through the Middlesbrough half. Back with De Sassi once again. Every outfield player is in the Middlesbrough half as Chelsea play from right to left. Here is Gallagher, closed down by Housen. Out to Sterling it goes. Colwell has made that pairing run ahead of him. Sterling though will come inside and then his ball is over hit. And out of play it goes for, uh, for a goal kick. What do you think now, Stuart, of the, the situation that Middlesbrough are facing themselves in? Yeah, it's a little bit unsettling, but like you say, you've got to play to your strengths and you've got the Coburn and Crooks up the top, so you know, get up to them, get hold of it. Can they get Isaiah Jones 10, 15 yards higher and 1v1 out on this right-hand side? And I think, you, like I said, play to your strengths and, and that's what the biggest are for Middlesbrough at the minute. Uh, it's not ideal, it's not the way probably they want to play, but you know, that's what you've got to do. You've got to, you've got to play the way that suits the team at the minute and I think for five or ten minutes, just get it up to the big lads, try and get hold of it and pin Chelsea back a little bit. The voice of Stuart Downing. We also have Pat Nevin with us as Jones wants to take the throw. Michael Carrick's actually saying to him, wait, just slow it down on this, this near side. Wait for some red shirts to get further forward is Jones to Housen helped on towards Crook stabs it off back towards Housen Caicedo got a foot there but now this is with Hackney who runs away from one and over, overruns it actually and Enzo Fernandez now passes the ball almost with the interception for Engel but Gusto is away from Engel and he runs forward he's now over the halfway line and then it strikes the heels of Madawaka and then that one might allow Coburn to battle for the ball in the in the midfield. Middlesbrough trying to put the challenges in. But Chelsea released the ball. The Middlesbrough fans start to find their voices as well. As here is Enzo Fernandez. Rolls it out towards the right-hand side. Gusto to Madawaka at a walking pace. Chelsea seem to have that control, Pat. Yeah, they want that control. I mean, they know themselves. They don't need to do too much tonight. I mean, if they can get it back to Stamford Bridge and, you know, it's a, even if it was a 0-0 or a 1-1, they take that comfortably. You know, you 
in 90 minutes against a lower league team at your own home ground starting from scratch we'll take that so they didn't need to push up they have changed as well to a back four haven't they yes you not listening I was that. listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's why they're a little bit more reticent about playing it out for the back of the goalkeeper if you're a back three you've got an extra centre back in there it's sometimes a little bit easier to do that um, but when you're going there back four you've adapted it slightly I think uh, Glover's uh, maybe taking the sensible safe route for a moment so Vandenberg now playing at the right back Engel is at left back and the two central defensive players are Dale Fry and the, uh, the substitute Matt Clark here is uh, De Sassen Gallagher just squirted away from him but he's uh, retained it eventually loses out actually does uh, Gallagher who's always chasing a losing battle in that respect he was on the stretch as Vandenberg with a little push in the back of Sterling who drops almost midway through his own half for, uh, for Chelsea now to De Sassi right in the centre circle hits a ball with pace forward through the channel towards Madawaka and it goes through towards uh, Tom Glover it's interesting watching the two wingers for Chelsea you know Raheem Sterling he's got the ball each time he's, he's basically turned inside or turned backwards he doesn't go direct, directly towards the players mark him you watch Madawaka every time he gets the ball turn pins back his ears and goes and has a go now he's lost the ball a few times but he's having a go each time when they played Preston in the cup at the weekend they laboured in the first half all the four goals came after the break and Pochettino was saying for tonight it was imperative that they, they made a good start as uh, Jones comes forward and, uh, Colwell with the interception preventing it from reaching Jones now with uh, with Gallagher Sterling he was just caught uh, by Barlas so that'll be a free kick after what had been a, a positive opening for, for Middlesbrough do you think that Pochettino will be happy with how Chelsea are playing now? Yeah he wanted them to start well but also we told them you're going to get the team flying at you for the first 10 or 15 minutes what they're doing now in a controlled way yeah they'll be happy as long as they don't lose a goal Gusto can't get forward in that right corner of the penalty area there was uh, there was Clark happy with a turn we'll get a throw for, uh, for Middlesbrough the, uh, they're still not created a great deal Chelsea no. you know they've got, they've got the ball they've, they've, it's been a, a big part of the last season or two that they've played they've got a lot of possession in a lot of games and sometimes it's looked nice but it's not been the same cutting edge as they'd expect or want here is uh, Palmer back with, uh, with Gusto Caicedo makes the run forward returns the ball to Gusto and Engel will marshal the ball out of play for, uh, for a goal kick if you look back at their record since the end of September they've failed to score in just two games out of 18 Chelsea yeah. you'd, ex you'd expect with the quality that they've got to conjure up at least a two or three chances in the game absolutely and, and to be honest they generally do create the chances I mean that's why Broja is on the bench tonight you know he's your centre forward he's the obvious pick as a centre forward but he's not playing because he's not been putting them away so yeah you expect them to create chances but they know that I suppose what Chelsea expect here is at some point Middles were going to have to take some chances and push forward a little bit because they need a little bit of cushion for the second leg and when that happens they'll be well playing in Chelsea's hands 28 minutes played nil-nil Madawaka picks it up far side the right drives into the penalty area goes past two middles for players and in the end it was uh, Dale Fry who uh, who came across and it goes behind for a, for a corner kick leggy sort of player and when he's running it like that it must be difficult to stop that's what I'm saying you know you know, defenders just don't want you to run at them and they don't want you to run at them at pace and if you get pretty good then he's got very good close skills I mean it's a bit of a nightmare he's gone past two or three players there got a corner out of it that's absolutely fine but he's also driving the defender back corner taken short Palmer to Sterling far side the right Sterling's cross is blocked comes back to Sterling brings it under control with his back to goal finds Palmer once again 30 yards out there was a slip there by Coburn that allows Palmer then to deliver the ball into the penalty area and the header from Colwell is over the top never really got over it and it will uh, probably go down as, a, as the first serious chance of the game nil-nil yeah, but it wasn't a great chance it was been quite close to the mark and can argue may have been offside as well uh, but the first real effort on goal apart from that very early one from Cole Palmer I think that team Colville's been set he's going to get a yellow card for that got himself into a bad position I mean I don't know why you're arguing you've, you've dragged him back <laughs> there's no argument there VAR or not that's a yellow card and again it's, it's a saying about players who are maybe a bit more comfortable it's more central you put them out that far position they find themselves in bad position sometimes they've not got that, that 360 degrees that you need to be able to look around and see where the danger is and that's an absolute stick on the yellow card and of course if you're a winger playing against that hello 
Sam Borough with no hesitation the referee gives the uh, the yellow card to uh, to the Chelsea defender trying to create quite a high line outside the D of the penalty area to protect their keeper Petrovic well Lass is going to take it Palmer isn't back the full 10 yards for this uh, this free kick. Needs a good delivery. Barlassa hits a diagonal ball out towards that far side. Headed back towards Crooks who battles for it on the edge of the area. Loses out to Gallagher. Palmer lifts it forward. Madawaka and Gallagher both go for the same ball. And in the end it's seen back by Engel towards Tom Glover, the middles for a goalkeeper. All in green who plays it short to, uh, to Barlassa whose forward ball is now passed out towards Crooks they're trying to beat the Chelsea press this is Jones keeps it with Middlesbrough one thing I underline you know, watch Sunderland all day and it, it did for a period look men against boys doesn't look like that here oh. that was a poor ball by House and goes straight towards Palmer and he's put it wide and that's a real let off for Middlesbrough because it's House and he knew straight away apologises it was gift wrapped to Palmer and on the edge of the area he stroked it left footed wide of the right hand post Palmer looks so confident when he got the ball there so you could argue it was overplayed there but that was an easy pass on a terrible mistake great chance for Chelsea they didn't make it themselves but he should have finished it Stuart Downing what a letter oh hold on there's a break now for Middlesbrough ball played forward to Hackney Hackney to the edge of the area takes it early he was I think aware of Cusco on the cover and his right footed shot was dragged wide Stuart he didn't look overly confident did he Hackney there going through I think but on the other end uh, Palmer as soon as he touched the ball I thought goal goal opportunity like Pat said he looked really confident on his left foot but big mistake from Middlesbrough and that's what you don't want to do give them confidence and give them big chances because you know you give them two or three they're probably going to take one so that's a big let off for Middlesbrough that one and Pat what are your thoughts on the Hackney chance because he did take it very early from the edge of the he area took it early because he knew he didn't have the pace to get away from Gusto yeah. and then you think what's Gusto doing there the two centre backs have been caught out Gusto read it brilliantly so don't take, take nothing away from Gusto's A intelligence B speed to go over there and see where the danger was very good defending from him 32 minutes played BBC Radio 5 Live also available on the BBC Sounds app and it remains 0-0 between Middlesbrough who were 12th in the Championship against Chelsea 10th in the Premier League so what's that 22 places beneath Chelsea in the English League system and nothing to choose between the two so far in this first leg of this Carabao Cup semi-final playing for the right to be at Wembley on the 25th of February Enzo Fernandez spreads play out towards that far side and because it was in the air it gave plenty of time for the 25 year old Danish defender Lucas Engel to head it out of play for a Chelsea throw well, look at it, it was just over half an hour gone now and Middlesbrough had most of the play for the first 10 minutes a lot of the ball but if you look at the stats now 62% possession for Chelsea but it's not really that dangerous possession a lot of the time until generally they get it to Madueke he's probably looked the most dangerous for Chelsea we do have a chance, by the way, to uh, to say I was there, if you so wish, for uh, a piece of English football history tonight. Because if Chelsea were to win and to keep a clean sheet, they would equal Liverpool's record of uh, winning the most consecutive games by keeping successive clean sheets to ten. There's the ball towards Gallagher goes out of play for a goal kick Liverpool against West Brom achieved 10 successive wins without conceding between 1997 and 2010 Chelsea have won their last 9 without conceding with an aggregate score of 21 goals for and 0 against the last time that Middlesbrough scored against Chelsea was a 2-1 win in 2006 Emmanuel Pogatetz and Mark Viduka hmm. <laughs> he, he was a player wow <laughs> they've just made two big mistakes Butter, and get caught in the ball but they're still dribbling it from centre back in their own box yeah, they've got a bit of belief in themselves that was uh, Dan Barlasa who dropped in between the two central defenders and it was uh, a sharp turn as he tried to pass the ball out of defence and then Enzo Fernandez has been fouled and it will be a free kick so it's fair to say that history is against Middlesbrough injuries certainly have hampered Michael Carrick's cause in these early stages by losing those two players in the opening 19 minutes of this game Latte Laff going off and then Bangura as Madawaka comes forward 
Passes the ball towards Palmer. Put behind by Dale Fry. It's a Chelsea corner kick. Nil nil. I, I know it's, I'm a little bit biased in his wingers, but Madueke has been great, hasn't he? He's going by people for fun, and he doesn't think twice. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a shame to compare him with Sterling, who's a different type of player. But Madueke, you just want him to get the ball every time. Palmer within swinging corner. And there was plenty of swing on it too. Headed out only as far as Gusto. Madueke on that far side, the right gets plenty of lift and Casado was the one coming round the back and it goes out of play for, uh, for a goal kick uh, Glover looks for the early ball over the top Jones is the one who's furthest forward just to a game was on the cover coming across the pitch from his right back roll into a central area to head it away for, uh, for Chelsea Crooks puts pressure on Gallagher Gallagher holds him off Middlesbrough eventually go towards Enzo Fernandez, but he's picked out Colwell now didn't, when it went out of play because of the presence of Housen and it will be a Middlesbrough throw on the right hand side I didn't think it went out of play it as if it was still in play for me but uh, the assistant referee has got his flag up very very quickly is there such a thing as a wingers union I don't know about the goalkeepers union though are you and Stuart part of the, the wingers union I think we call ourselves a creatives union yeah we go for that I, I, ended up, I ended up a full back at the end so <laughs> yeah he did the lot he did the whole way for them. he used to be six foot four when he started <laughs> <laughs> Nine minutes to go at half time. Ball over the top. Isaiah Jones takes it into the penalty area. Colwell is with him. He's on the yellow card. Jones with a cutback. Hayden Hackney with a touch. And the Riverside goes absolutely berserk. Nine minutes before half time. Middleton's first serious attack of the highly rated Hayden Hackney. Gives Middleton a four important breakthrough goal. One nil. Phenomenal goal, phenomenal noise as well. But we've talked about it before the start of the game. You've got a left full back who's not a full back. He's a centre back. He gets himself completely in the wrong position there. Simple ball over the top. And he's away down the left hand side. Jones there, puts it across there. And Hackney's there very, very calmly to touch it in towards the back post. And I say very calmly. He's the only calm person in here with red and white in his neck. Didn't he take it so well, Stuart Downing? Got the ball. I, I wouldn't be surprised there's going to be a change for Chelsea left back at half time. I think Colwell doesn't look comfortable at all. Jones is the outlet for Middlesbrough down the side, 100%. We've got to keep using him. And to be fair to Hackney, he made a great run to the ball. You've got to say, it was a very, very great, very, very comfortable finish. Um, the Middlesbrough deserve it. I think they started really well, didn't they? Had a little bit of spell out possession, but you've got to say, they've stuck in there after all the adversity and the injuries. Uh, oh, and even got the chance again. Coburn gets away from Disassi. Coburn runs forward. Coburn into the penalty area. Gusto makes the challenge. And he got stops to his knees, does the young forward, and behind for a goal kick. But it was Jones with a cutback from the right hand side. And then Hackney just opened up his left boot and yeah. just guided the ball in past Petrovic. Yeah, I think I love that for a striker or someone coming from midfield. Yeah. yeah, play across the six yard line. And, yeah, he does it in the night and stays calm. And the moment, then, as you say, he passes it in. But, you know, if we can see, we have chatted about it before the game, if there's a weakness, it's a comparative weakness, Colwell's a good player, yeah. but he's not a natural left back, it's a very specific position, and if you're up against your talented, quick winger who's a specialist there, it's always going to be a danger, and, you know, one before the game, and they paid the price for it so far, Chelsea. And forget that little bit of English football history I was talking about, because Middlesbrough now have scored against Chelsea. Here is Gallagher away from Housen. Tried to curl the ball along the ground towards Madawake, but the interception was set was Engel towards Jones. Jones brings it under control very well on the right hand side. Looks for the run of Crooks in behind Colwell once again. Crooks waits almost level with the penalty area. Tried the back heel to Jones, volleyed away by Colwell. But Middlesbrough of the Championship lead Chelsea of the Premier League by a goal to nil in this first leg and it is a vibrant riverside now the supporters are out of their seats the red and white scarves are being swirled around their heads you can feel the vibrations as we sit here in the main stand at this top tier Barlasa loses the ball in the midfield Palmer to Madawaka Madawaka enters the penalty area rising right footed shot off target goal kick 1-0 middles for Pat Nevin well, it's absolutely well done no need to do that they are good position they got himself into they really is asking questions now 
the confidence you can see in the stands and you can hear in the stands yeah but surely that gives confidence to these middle square players they'll say they should have got a penalty in the first minute they, they've, they've got all sorts of things going against them but they still went up just now and they know that they can create chances and again we have to talk about Caldwell just now he's on a yellow card after the goal there the ball came towards him he had to back off he couldn't tackle he's on a yellow card so as Stuart was saying there it makes perfect sense do they make a change but they need to bring on the young player you know they moved him down the line it's probably Alfie Gilf Chris he probably comes on there well, just looking at the bench, they've named eight on the bench. They haven't filled their entire quota as a bouncing ball eventually will go back into the penalty box for uh, Tom Glover to take. But two of those on the of the eight are goalkeepers in Bettinelli and Bergstrom. So they're not they're not blessed with a great deal of options in terms of outfield players. Making the run forward. Ball played around the back towards Coburn. Left inside left channel of the penalty box. Hackney, left corner of the area. Engels actually ahead of him. Here is Engel now. Leading by a goal to nil. Now with Coburn. On the stretch was Barlassa. Did very well. Good footwork. Now the cross comes in from the left. Colwell directs his header away. Sterling turns. Got away from Housen. Chelsea lose the ball. 25 yards out from goal. Engel hits one. Strikes the back of Gusto. Blocked on the edge of the penalty area. Middlesbrough buoyed by that goal. Looking to try and strike again in the four minutes before half time. Come on, Borough is the champ from the home crowd here as it goes back to Petrovic all in yellow away towards our right hand side and then effortlessly just calm as ever is Thiago who just strides forward never ever looks face Madawaka concentration now the key for Middlesbrough Pat Nevin yeah um, but they, they feel it you're absolutely right they feel that they can get against Chelsea again they can create more chances they are so quick in the tackle just now then they are they are bullying Chelsea in a number of positions just now and that's the last thing you expected Isaiah Jones hooks it away from Colwell and Colwell is forced to recover and in that foot chase he matched him for pace but he had to be careful as Pat and Stewart have both alluded to that if he was to catch him on a, a yellow card then that would result potentially in a second yellow he was just testing the back of his uh, his calves there was uh, Isaiah Jones in that his name is being sung by the, uh, the Middlesbrough supporters. It's a throw to Middlesbrough on this right-hand side. Vandenberg will go back towards Dale Fry. The goalkeeper, Tom Glover, is out of his penalty area as it reaches Matt Clark to Housen. Three minutes to go to half-time. Back to Glover. Hits it first time because Palmer was running towards him. He's managed to pick out Engel off the chest. First effort down the line is blocked. Passes the second effort inside to Housen. Balassa gives it back towards Housen. Just outside the centre circle up towards Crooks on the stretch Middlesbrough lose the ball picked up by Madawaka now short of the halfway line passes the ball back to uh, to Gusto he waits and now inside to De Sassi Thiago Chelsea at this stage well, you, you were saying before Thiago Silva is slowing down and very calm and not rushed I think those Chelsea fans over there want a lot about rush and want a lot about pace to the game. The ball's up to about. We're talking about the fact that Chelsea had, you know, almost two thirds of the possession. But unless it went to Madureke, it wasn't really leading too much, was it? And the best chance that Chelsea have had was actually leading a plate to them by Burr. They need to do better. Here is uh, Sterling. Sterling on the left-hand side. Sterling dinks the ball in, headed away by Dale Fry. What is amazing is there's a free kick there for a foul on Coburn is that Stuart Pat talks about Matt Awaker, but there's an England international on this left-hand side, Sterling, and we've hardly mentioned it. Yeah, to be fair, he's got in some great positions down there, but his final ball's been really poor, and a lot of the times as well, he's he's sort of passing it back to his left back and not committing the full back which Van der Berg will be very happy about I mean on the other side Matt Awaka, every time he gets it like Pat says he commits that defender and that's a nightmare I've played at left back myself and what you want him to do is play it back to the full back your job's easy they keep running at you like Colwell's getting on this side against Isaiah Jones it's a nightmare and I think for Middlesbrough I think their tactics are just keep getting the ball to Isaiah Jones and keep putting Colwell under pressure because like we say it wouldn't be surprised at half time there's going to be a change on, on this left hand side for Chelsea but why can't Sterling get into the game pack Sterling has to be a little bit more direct he is a we know these capabilities we know how special he is but he has to use that directness a little bit more often um, and if he does that you get in a habit sometimes if you're a player going backwards get the ball turn and ask every defender a question 
Well, here is Coburn now for Middlesbrough over the halfway line. Hackney, the goal scorer, fouled by Casado. And with no, the referee, wasn't. and with the referee there. The referee was handily placed, and he's uh, it was a dive forward, and he said he says play on. And Hackney actually is back to his feet and now wins the ball. He's got a bit of area to run into on that far side. But again, doesn't necessarily trust his pace and therefore he waits and slows it down and then ultimately they lose the ball and Gallagher chips it out towards that far side to Madawaka. Engel goes to with him, shoulder to shoulder. Does he keep the ball in play? Well, if he does, he hooks it to the edge of the area and then Clark will get the ball back from Barlassa and Middlesbrough will build slowly as we're about to find out how much added on time there will be and we're into six minutes of added on time in this first half of this first Carabao Cup semi-final first leg here at the Riverside in Teesside where Middlesbrough lead Chelsea by a goal to nil Michael Carrick's side hit by injury and further depleted with those two substitutions that they were forced to make inside the opening 19 minutes but Hackney with the goal as Vandenberg with a little push on Raheem Sterling and that just allows the ball to go out of play for, uh, for a throw and uh, Chelsea Look, do you know I'll tell you one of the problems Chelsea have got just now the sense of going a little bit before the goal as well the amount of space that Middlesbrough are getting in that field is really, really surprising. You, all, you don't often get that. We talked about this before the game, where, where the team's going to be dominant, where Chelsea are going to be dominant, and yes, they passed the ball well. But since they're going around about that period of time there, the players that are getting the ball, they're not getting closed down. I, mean, I can see Enzo shouting around to his teammates there, get close, you know, make it hard for them. De Sassi with a back pass to, uh, to Petrovic. This is his uh, eighth appearance, taking advantage of the injury to, uh, to Robert Sanchez for the, uh, the young Serbian goalkeeper. There's Gusto at, uh, at right back. Palmer is just on the inside of him. England international now strokes it into the centre circle. Enzo Fernandez wants Colwell going a little bit further ahead. Instead, he passes the ball towards Sterling, who now runs at Jones. Reaches Gallagher with his back to goal. Enzo Fernandez goes square. Caicedo will shoot from distance, and that whistles wide. Hit it right-footed. He's yet to score from Ch for Chelsea. That wasn't too far off target. Good effort. We were just saying about Raheem. Run at players. And he did it there. No, he didn't do it particularly well, but he's taken two players out of the game when they lost the ball. And what happens then? You've dragged everyone towards you, and there's a gap somewhere else. It lands at Casado, and he has a shot t uh, towards goal, and nearly scores a goal. If you're a wide player, go to ask questions. Keep on asking questions. And some, it won't always work. Do you know what? Well, we need to work once. You know, we were, we were talking about the conditions and we are saying how cold it is and uh, whether some of the players might not necessarily fancy it. Just to add to the cold, it's now raining here in Middlesbrough. And the championship team protecting their lead. Vandenberg, forward ball, push there from Jones on Colwell. That'll be a free kick to Chelsea midway through their own half. Stoppage time here on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Enzo Fernandez switches it out towards that far side. Gusto gets it out from underneath his feet, runs forward over the half halfway line, 10 yards inside the middles for a half, Hackney is back, in fact every red shirt is back behind the ball but Madawaka will come in off that right touch line diagonal ball, Palmer with the layoff, Madawaka now, 30 yards out from goal finds Sterling, left corner of the penalty area, Sterling waits, finds Enzo Fernandez. Fernandez tries to place it, the keeper smelt it, and then Palmer has ballooned it over the bar what a chance that was he was probably surprised that the keeper lost it, it just bubbled out of his grasp and it was hard for him to control, but he had a gaping goal, and Palmer popped it over the bar. It's one of those ones that is actually quite... Uh, it looks really easy, doesn't it? Because he's in front of goal. He doesn't expect it, and you're right, it's popped straight back at him. But you so expected the net to ripple there. It wasn't a great shot. He should have taken it easy. Actually, I've seen that a second time. He's got to score that. He's absolutely got to score that. That is a terrible miss. Well, we were only saying in the first half about dying... The, the, the how handling for a goalkeeper is a dying art I mean it wasn't a great deal of power from the effort from Enzo Fernandez so that's why they don't catch it <laughs> they'll try to there was a 
think the referee has stopped play for uh, a challenge on Colwell. It'll be a free kick for uh, for Chelsea. But he's had two gifts now, Cole Palmer, hasn't he? Yeah. This is especially the second one. He's, he's got a score, really, hasn't he? But right, well, Pat is with Raheem Sterling. That's twice he's, he's committed the fullback. He's drawn the winger in within the two players. He creates space for Fernandez to get the shot off. Yeah, the keeper should save it, but then it creates another chance for Chelsea. So Sterling, especially on this side, has got to keep committing Isaiah Jones back and um, and Rav Dan- Van der Berg because, like I say, Madureke on the other side has done that. To be fair, really, really lots of times in the first half, and he's he's creating a lot of chances. By my watch, we are as in as the ball played into Palmer. Palmer in brown the back. Palmer waits. Palmer settles himself. Good save by the goalkeeper, and then got an element of good fortune because it then popped back towards him off the uh, ricochet off Enzo Fernandez, and he gathered the ball safely the second attempt. And he knew nothing about it. He said, "Comes off Enzo. Enzo knew nothing about it either." But if you look at it now, the narrative of this game, you know, Chelsea are one goal down. You know, and there are real concerns. It could have easily been 3-1 up. Cole Palmer could have actually had three goals in his own there. He did everything just about right there. Just didn't get enough curl in the shot. We're inside the uh, the last 60 seconds of this uh, this first half. I thought that uh, Palmer was going to redeem himself for his two earlier misses, but it was actually a good save by uh, by Glover, getting low and sharp down towards his right hand side, and saving it with his uh, his right arm. And then that element of fortune that you could argue that Middlesbrough maybe deserve after the bad fortune that saw them lose two early injuries in this first half. They lead by a goal to nil, but Chelsea have shown more than enough that they could easily level in this first leg here at the Riverside. The second leg will be two weeks tonight at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea looking for their first trophy in the Todd Burley era. And you think that with Roman Abramovich is tied 19 trophies in 19 years as Palmer out towards Gusto, far side. Gusto with the cross, diagonal ball. Sterling had made a run towards the edge of the six yard area. And the deaf in cheers will tell you that that is the half time whistle from our referee Sam Burrett. And Middlesbrough lead Chelsea by a goal to nil. Hayden Hackney with the all important goal eight minutes before half time. You'll hear more, I'm sure, from Pat and Stewart with Steve here at the break. But at half time, five live. Middlesbrough lead Chelsea by a goal to nil. Thanks, Steve. I think the uh, the, the light rain has now just uh, resorted to a, a, to a faint, faint drizzle as neither side has made a change at the start of the second half. So Middlesbrough all in red, but they did make two changes, remember, during that first half. Line up with Tom Glover in goal. A back four now of Vandenberg, Fry, Clark and Engel. A midfield of Jones, Barlassa, Housen, Hackney, Crooks and Coburn. All in red, playing from right to left as we look. As our referee, Sam Barrett, blows his whistle against Chelsea in the all-dark blue with... Petrovic in goal, back four of Gusto, Thiago de Sassi and Colville, who's on the yellow card. Caicedo, Fernandez, Gallagher, Madueka, Palmer and Sterling. Pat Nevin, what are you expecting second half? Well, what I suggested beforehand, I don't want Cole Palmer up front. And it doesn't look as if he's going to play up front. He's actually already dropped back a little bit, hasn't he? Into a place where he can get ball from a little bit deeper. And it would appear that the furthest forward is kind of Gallagher at the moment. We shall see if that stays the, the, the case. Here is uh, Thiago. Chelsea then playing from left to right as we look in this uh, in this second half. Middlesbrough playing in their first League Cup semi-final in 20 years. 20 years since they won it in 2004 and some Middlesbrough fans might just start to be dreaming of reaching the final. Then of course it was Millennium Stadium Cardiff but Wembley awaits next month. Still a lot of football to be played though in this League Cup semi-final as Clark does well in the central defence. Vandenberg passes the ball forward. Jones being tracked by Colwell. Uh, got a foot into the challenge and it will go out for a, a Chelsea throw in front of those 3,000 travelling fans on that far side of the ground here at the Riverside. It's a, a sellout. It holds just under 35,000. There's Coburn for Middlesbrough. Big, tall forward. Loses the ball. Gallagher picks it up for uh, for Chelsea. Two minutes into the second half. Already noticeable. Raheem Sterling chasing down the full back there. Colwyn, got, he, he chased back and he tackled really high up the field as well. They've been told Chelsea very, very clearly. Higher pace, get closer to players. And uh, well, they started that way in the second half. It was, well, it's left to be seen if they will continue to do it. 
Here is uh, De Sassi, forward ball. Gallagher couldn't take it in his stride. Cleared away by Fry, onto the chest of Hackney. Loses out to Caicedo. Now towards Madawaka. Madawaka on this near side, the right. Left footed, plays it to Gusto. First time cross, arcs its way in. Headed out by Fry. Another header out by Fry on the edge of the penalty area. You know, Maurizio Pochettino has never lost to lower league opposition in the, uh, in the League Cup. He's won nine and he's drawn two. Although one of those draws did see him eliminated when he was the Tottenham manager to Colchester in a penalty shootout about four years ago. He's got a proud record to protect. High hopes for Chelsea. You think of the cost of that starting eleven. Inconceivable to think that they wouldn't get past Middlesbrough over two legs, but they're behind by a goal to nil. And Crooks now on the charge. Releases Jones, right side of the area. Crooks makes his way back in, over his head. Coburn was arriving, headed away. And now Sterling inside his penalty area will try and roll it out of play. But he can't get past Barlatta. And it goes out for a Middlesbrough throw. You just knew what Meadows were going to do there. Get the ball, get it out to the right-hand side and just ask that man. Jones to go and run at his defender he does it again gets to the byline decent cross and the big man the back but just wasn't powerful enough Jones on the right delivers the cross cleared on the half volley by the right leg of De Sassi out of play it will go for another Middlesbrough throw but a lot closer towards the halfway line early in the second half on BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds where Michael Carrick's side lead by a goal to nil he won the League Cup three times with Manchester United to a an array of trophies, five Premier Leagues, an FA Cup, a Champions League, a Club World Cup, and his assistant, Jonathan Woodgate, scored the winning goal against Chelsea in the League Cup final for Tottenham Hotspur back in 2008. So they have the pedigree on the bench, and this injury hit side in the Championship have a slender lead, five minutes almost into the second half as the ball goes back to the Australian goalkeeper Tom Glover. Now it's with Clark, who hits it left-footed. De Sassi and Coburn in a wrestling contest. The referee lets play continue. De Sassi is back to his feet, under pressure from Crooks. Goes back towards Petrovic, all in yellow. Blue boots away towards our left-hand side. Thiago came off the bench against Preston in the FA Cup at the weekend. Casually strokes it towards De Sassi, who's now got the space to run towards the halfway line as Hackney backs off him. And Palmer lays it off towards Gusto. Gusto. Infield. Palmer midway through the middle's Braha. De Sassi sweeps it to the centre circle. Briefest of touches from Thiago Silva. Now it's with Sterling. Overruns it. Jones was helping out on that far side. And Jones now can come forward. Hayden Hackney goes into the challenge in the centre circle with Gusto. Headed forward by Caicedo. Headed away then by Engel. Hackney was there. De Sassi will let the ball settle and turns away from the Middlesbrough goal scorer. And now it's with Thiago Silva once more. Nil, uh, one nil to Middlesbrough. You can feel real tension about it, but Middlesbrough, you know, they really get into every tackle. I tell you what, right at this moment, they're winning every one. That was Barlasa, nudged over from Caicedo. He complains to the ref. And the referee gives that decision in favour of, uh, of Middlesbrough. It's certainly competitive in that midfield, Stuart Downing. It is a good battle, it's, it's good to watch. Um, and like Pat said, Middlesbrough, you know, the first of the tackle, and, and that's what gets the crowd going, gets everyone behind them, and, and that's what they're going to need, especially the second half, because they will come under pressure a little bit. And, but when the uh, chance is there to win the tackles, they've got to be first to it. Well, this free kick is not quite midway through the Chelsea half as Middlesbrough play from right to left. Balassa stands over it. Engel has come out to this near side, the left is an option. Chelsea have got everybody back behind the ball. Barlasa chips it long into the penalty area and strikes Dale Fry, who was trying to make a, a run round the back off his chest and into the arms of the Serbian goalkeeper Petrovic, who just rolls it out to Caicedo and his forward ball now finds Gallagher. It's very intriguing to watch Chelsea just now. They haven't got a centre forward. They've got three or maybe four different players that are taking their turns to go into that position. So they are rotating it all the time currently. Raheem Sterling's kind of sitting in that position, but some of the times it's been Enzo some of the times it's been back to Cole Palmer again uh, but they don't seem to have settled in one and if you're in Brando Brogia how much should be feeling just now? Yeah he is an option on the bench here is uh, Maddow Waker Middlesbrough though 
With everybody back behind the ball, Maraweka goes into a central area. Enzo Fernandez feeds it on its way towards Sterling. Sterling left-hand side. Colwell fractionally behind him. Back it goes out towards Sterling on the Chelsea left. Level the penalty area. Shorten inside. Enzo Fernandez with the cross into the penalty area. And the header from Maraweka was plucked out of the air by the Middlesbrough goalkeeper Tom Glover just moving high up away towards his right hand side had to stretch a fraction but not overly stretched no it's, it's, a, it's an easy save for him when he gets out in the end his positioning was absolutely perfect Maverick had to do well to actually get his head on the end of that but uh, half chance no more than that Middlesbrough 1-0 up Clark gives the ball straight towards Palmer now Gallagher lays it off to Madawaka 25 yards out from goal back out towards Palmer right side of the penalty area Palmer uses the overlap as the decoy inside towards Sterling cleared away and hammered away by Housen Pat do you think he said have it when he had that one away there <laughs> he's only launched it about 60 70 yards there and there's not a Borough fan in here that is unhappy with that situation get it out of the danger area when under a lot of pressure but you are beginning to see Cole Palmer picking it up in those areas he loves to pick it up and, and it's asking a question in uh, Middlesbrough and a couple of times you know the centre backs have had to come out the Clark's finding himself in a slightly difficult position where he doesn't want to come out of that area he has to do it to pick up uh, Cole Palmer which is leaving gaps Johnny House has been a terrific servant for, uh, for Middlesbrough Michael Carrick in his conversation with, uh, with Steve Crossman was he hinted that he was looking at maybe going in what next does he go down the, uh, the, the coaching route but over 300 appearances for the club since he joined six years ago from Norwich City as uh, Middlesbrough protect their 1-0 lead Maduweka quickly on the inside of Engel accelerates in towards the penalty area three red shirts around him Maduweka manages to cross the ball from the byline stays in that was electrifying from Maduweka and out of play it goes for a Chelsea throw it's hard to imagine why he doesn't get a start every week Maduweka because you know he's always asking questions he's always getting there now there's not been a, a final product yet but it's absolutely there and what he's doing is he's creating space for others because if you take players out of the game there will be space for others elsewhere to Sassi to shoot from long range and it's well off target you know the thought provoking thing about Chelsea and you'll have seen them a lot more than I have but we've talked about they've spent over a billion pounds under Todd Burley and yet every time I see Chelsea I still don't see a team I see a team of individuals yeah and it, 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 what I said before the game is that's how they look just now they have not got what looks like an ethos but what you do is you buy the players and it, yeah you use the data and it looks like a team that's built like on data but that's what you've got a manager for you've got a manager to then mould that together into a team at the moment you know they, there are moments when it looks as if they have got that but there are other times you think that's a good distance off I mean certainly a good distance off what would be a top four team the voice of Pat Nevin on BBC Radio 5 Live as Gallagher rolls away to Enzo Fernandez. Fernandez now finds Sterling. This looks promising for Chelsea. Sterling with the cutback, takes a deflection. Barlasa clears it away from the edge of the area. Crooks now picks it up. Coburn was making the run through the middle. Jones is ahead of him on the right-hand side. Crooks now chips the ball over the top. Jones with his pace. Thiago Silva unruffled with a downward header. And now it's with Gallagher. Ten minutes into the second half. Gallagher. Crooks, all action, bustling midfielder, referees played the advantage, there was a foul on Gallagher, but the referees let the game flow, now with Maduweka on the right hand side, Maduweka scoops over the cross, and it curls out of play for, uh, for a throw, dare I say it, they're missing a centre forward. Well, and also final product <laughs> from the player who does everything up until the, the final, final cross or the final ball, when you get into those positions, you know, it's having... You know, the, the, the vision to be able to get your head up at that last second and pick somebody out. Um, yeah, he put it into an area where you'd expect a centre forward and Chelsea haven't got an out and out centre forward. But you kind of also need to pick your head up there because he got himself some great space after going by a couple of players. 11 minutes into the second half and that Hayden Hackney goal is still the difference between the two. Anfield tomorrow night, Liverpool against Fulham. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff. Five Live will be there. Coburn flicks the ball on, bounces off the head of Colwell, and he hits it left-footed away downfield, headed back by Dale Fry, only as far as uh, Gallagher. Gallagher lifts it into the air. Maduweka tries to roll it into the path of Gusto, and then 
it didn't fall for Gusto and there was a potential break on and Gusto fouled Engel and it'll be a free kick to Middlesbrough and I know what you're thinking I think Gusto's a wee bit lucky there because uh, it was very clever he would say that he's taken him out of the play he knew there was a dangerous situation and uh, well cup rules I put offside against Coburn. There's only been the one yellow card actually shown. That was to uh, to Levi Colwell just before the uh, the half hour. Yeah, I did explain to you before the game. It's it's cup rules. The game you got away with so much more in these cup games. Well, here is uh, Cole Palmer on the halfway line. Thiago Silva left of the centre circle. Colwell just to the side of him. Sterling's come quite deep, just in from that left touch line. Chelsea now have every outfield player in the Middlesbrough half away towards our right-hand side. Gusto, a few yards in from the right touch line, gets that ball back from Cole Palmer. Middlesbrough being organised. Colwell out towards Sterling. Sterling faced by Isaiah Jones. Goes on the outside, delivers the cross into the penalty area. The header from Madawaka couldn't get enough on it. Clark put him off. Gusto picks up that loose ball outside the area under pressure from Hackney being forced away from goal by the Middlesbrough midfielder <laughs> Middlesbrough working hard off the ball Colwell forward ball Gallagher first time layoff out towards Sterling now starting to see a little bit more of the ball but it doubled up on him and Crooks does well uses his strength dispossesses Sterling and Vandenberg not phased by the presence of Gallagher tries to hold off Gallagher ball doesn't go out of play falls to Enzo Fernandez now enters the penalty area twists and turns can't get the shot away pulls it back to Caicedo he squares it first time Gusto now 30 yards out from goal Middlesbrough once again working so hard with those red shirts trying to reduce the options for Chelsea and helped out by this vociferous support inside the Riverside as we approach the hour mark 1-0 to the championship side but Chelsea are probing Gallagher with the cross plucked out of the air by Tom Glover got to say Stuart they're defending ever so well Middlesbrough yeah they are and the same as the weekend's game against uh, Aston Villa I'm sure Michael when you think of him tactically what, well I know he likes he likes it to be played wide and not going through the middle of him and they're doing exactly that now I know Sterling's got down the outside and that was one of the first times he's been positive and he got a good cross in but I think Michael will be pretty, pretty relaxed about it like you said they're not creating clear cut opportunities and no, they're not. Not at the moment. As we approach the hour mark, this is De Sassi in the centre circle. Still the persistent drizzle falling here on Teesside. De Sassi now enters the Middlesbrough half. Still quite that high line, just squeezing up the play and concentrating that middle area of the pitch. As Clark under pressure from Gusto to Engel, hooks it away, bouncing ball, Coburn takes it on the chest, shows too much to Caicedo, little flick there by Housen to tidy up matters in the midfield for Middlesbrough, and now it's with Dale Fry, forward ball, Barlassa, able to turn, brings the ball away, and now along the ground, releases it to this left-hand side, the red shirt rippling of Engel, his ball though has been given away, all retention has got to be key for Middlesbrough if they're to succeed in protecting this slender lead that they have in this League Cup semi-final. Madawaka to Gusto. Michael Carrick asked for the crowd to turn up and to play their role. They're trying to do their bit. Enzo Fernandez out to Madawaka. Right-hand side, Madawaka. Gusto's first time crosses a low one. Reaches Gallagher, turns and pulls it wide tried to roll his man right footed it was a good foot away from that left hand post as we look 1-0 Middlesbrough yeah that's what a centre forward should do and he found himself in centre forward position there pulled the ball up and tried and twist and turn on it but he couldn't get it clean enough and yeah once again the defending has been very very good but the concentration levels that are now needed to are huge because they're going to be under quite a bit of pressure they, no one can really turn off at any point in time so far in the second half they haven't made any of those mistakes they were making in the first half you know the passes into dangerous areas and laying chances on for Chelsea that's not happened so they'll be delighted with that but uh, at the moment they're not creating too much going forward but they don't need to they're one up I was about to ask you are you surprised that we haven't seen Amanda Broya just yet but I don't need to ask you that because I can actually see him getting his final instructions alongside Mudrick alongside Mudrick so they're going to have a focal point and they're also going to have plenty of pace as well with the Ukrainian as the site of the blonde haired number 10 and then Broya 
emerge from down below. Meanwhile, Clark heads it away for Middlesbrough, helped further away by Balassa, headed back by De Sassi to Sterling, wriggles free, edge of the area, stepping out of defence, Engel comes back, Madawaka, Engel back in position, Middlesbrough surround Madawaka. There were three, four red shirts that quickly dealt with that situation. Coburn was looking for a free kick, Michael Carrick is angry that it wasn't given. Chelsea just starting to step up the pressure, looking for an equaliser. Live on five live. 1-0 they trail. Engel goes into a sliding challenge. They're starting to be asked questions, Pat Nevin, Middlesbrough. Yeah, this guy who cops you in better, hasn't it? You know, it's a really good game apart from anything else, but there is no doubt Chelsea have lifted it a little bit now. The pace look a lot better at the moment and um, Matareki coming off is, um, I have to say, I'm slightly surprised at that. You know, Madrid's a, obviously a very good player to bring on in that situation, but uh, I have to say I'm slightly surprised at that because I think he's been uh, one of Chelsea's best players. I don't think you're alone. Did I just see you shaking your head, Stuart Downing? Yeah, I can't get um, my head around that one. I think he's been probably, ch- along with Paul Palmer, the most threatening player for Chelsea. I mean, I'll be honest, I thought it might have been Sterling or, or a Gallagher, maybe someone like that, but yeah, I'm surprised at that. So Mudrick comes on for Madawaka. Broya has actually replaced Enzo Fernandez. Pat had talked about Gallagher being in a more advanced position in this uh, in this second half. Um, but Broya now is they've at least got a focal point. Cole Palmer looks like he's going to play off him. Raheem Sterling at the minute is on this uh, this right hand side as uh, Mudrick goes towards the uh, the left. So it's a bit of a rejig from Maurizio Pochettino. Will it pay off as they trail? Gusto with a cross headed out by Dale Fry, the longest serving player for Middlesbrough Middlesbrough now have it with Crooks to Hackney bounced away off his outstretched left boot and presented Chelsea with an opportunity as Hackney bounces into Caicedo I like a little bit of that a bit of attitude from the uh, from the young man 63 minutes played Middlesbrough still lead by a goal to nil what is turning into an absorbing second half now and it will certainly this scoreline keep the second leg alive for a fortnight's time in West London but Chelsea will be looking to level before it gets to that point De Sassi there's no real threat coming from the championship side at this stage it's a containment job as they protect their lead Sterling now on the right Gusto Hackney every red shirt back behind the ball Thiago Silva just quickly helps it on its way to Colwell Middlesbrough supporters try and raise the atmosphere once again in the Riverside on this cold, damp evening. As De Sassi central area finds Sterling, Gusto on the overlap. Sterling doesn't use it, holds on to the ball. Now passes the ball to Gusto. By and large, they're playing in front of Middlesbrough at this stage. Well, that's why it was such a surprise Madueke going off, because he was the one that was breaking the lines more than anyone else. So, but you know, the manager must only know what he wants and he wants to get the ball to Mudrick because he will try and use his pace to break the lines as well on the left-hand side. Casado, early ball, cleared by Fry. Again, it comes straight back at them. Gusto, right-hand side. Engel faces him. Caicedo will go on the overlap. Gusto passes the ball towards De Sassi. De Sassi waits. Right-hand side. Eventually the cross comes in from Caicedo. And Jones got the shout and just lets the ball run out of play. Well done, Jones, there. I mean, you know, the, he wants to be a winger. You know these kind of overlapping fullbacks, backs wing-backs, you know. Do they, are they really wingers or are they really fullbacks? They don't really know what they are sometimes. He actually showed why it's good to be both because he knew what how to defend there whereas a normal winger panics in that situation and he defended really well here is uh, Crooks over the halfway line break now on for Middlesbrough this is Jones Crooks pairing in towards the penalty area can he find him he plays the ball behind Crooks Crooks will get there Finds Engel, left-hand side, back with Crooks, left-hand side of the penalty area. Middlesbrough still lead by a goal to nil, 66 minutes played. Here is the goal scorer, Hackney, and gives it straight away towards Gusto. And what a promising break that was by Middlesbrough, and they couldn't take advantage of it. Yeah, once again, it's that far right-hand side defending so much space. There's nothing particularly complicated about it. They just put it in behind the, the space there, and he just uses his pace, gets into the corner, and then final ball. It, there wasn't much on, it has to be said. It, he had three Chelsea players that got back in the centre of the pitch at that point. And, uh, well, but I finally got a corner kick. 
to a corner kick. Can you see what the possession stats are from that computer? It should just be still be 60, 67, yeah, 67. 67 to Chelsea. I'm just thinking second half, they've created very little. Matawaker's head is probably about it. As we're three quarters of the way through this first leg of this first semi-final in the Carabao Cup. Live on Five Live and the BBC Sounds app. Where Michael Carrick's side, who had back-to-back -back home defeats, Coventry and Aston Villa are leading by a goal to nil. And they've got a corner kick left-hand side by Lasseter to take it, deep towards the far side. And it's cleared away by Broya, and he's hammered that out of play, and it will bounce just before the halfway line, and out for a Middlesbrough throw on that far side the rise as Pochettino prowls in his technical area. Yes, he looks uh, quite disappointed with that. He's made a few changes now. It's a, it's a Chelsea team now that looks almost it's been a 4-1-4-1. You've got the four midfielders, a Sterling. He's trying to get up alongside Cole Palmer as much as he possibly can, and obviously get a lot of that help from uh, Gallagher there, and obviously Mudrick. So trying as much as he can to get forward Gusto gets away from Engel not once but twice sliding in was Crooks got the ball as well that was a good old sliding challenge by Crooks Gusto stays on the ground Middlesbrough meanwhile come forward Hackney Crooks going on ahead of him Hackney to the edge of the area Balassa with a shot right footed it was always on the rise and it was always drifting away off target for a player who's yet to score for Middlesbrough but the referee will stop play because Gusto has stayed down. Again, it was a very, very strong challenge on Gusto. Again, normal times, Premier League game, you would expect a free kick to be given there. It's a very robust challenge. But what is very concerning and very heartening for Middlesbrough, but concerning for Chelsea, when they do get their breaks just now, Middlesbrough look really dangerous and Chelsea look incredibly open. Well, Michael Carrick is taking full advantage of this uh, injury to Gusto to get some instructions across to four or five of his players down below. Just over 20 minutes to go. This is where Middlesbrough fans will be daring to dream, Stuart Downing. Yeah, I mean, they're in a comfortable position, you've got to be honest. I think they defended quite well. All of Chelsea's players sort of in front of them, so I think Michael will be pretty happy the way it's going. But obviously, the longer it does go, it's tiring on the legs to shift in across and in that shape, so... They've just got to keep doing what they're doing and keep trying to use Isaiah Jones uh, on that counter-attack and that space in behind. And I think that's going to be the best opportunity for them to get another goal if they're going to get one. What's bizarre, if you look at Middlesbrough's route to the last four, is that all five matches this season have been away from home. They've scored at least two goals in each game. Their last home game in this competition was last season when they were when they knocked out in the first round by Barnsley. They're up against the... The money bags of Chelsea, and they're leading by a goal to nil. Do you watching the, the, the league games this season? I don't know if they're that much better away from home, uh, at home than away from home. I mean, they have done quite well away from home quite a few of the league games, and they've surprisingly lost one or two. You thought we'd have won at home as well, so you just get through with this Borough team. I don't think they really care that much home or away. Well, you're right, the form is indifferent in the uh, in the Championship home. They've uh, won six, they've lost six, they've only scored 14 goals in 13 home games so whilst they've certainly added one or two on their travels in the League Cup to get to the semi-finals in the championship they've struggled but they do have the all-important goal as Gusto waits to come back onto the field of play after treatment 20 minutes remain on BBC Radio 5 Live and Middlesbrough still lead by a goal to nil a goal from Hackney in the first half if you've just joined us very right, very interesting Megan Kai has got them to just push up a little bit further there they almost went in a 4-2-4 against Chelsea trying to make sure that they don't spend the entire to the game and their own 18 yard line just seen Maurizio Pochettino pushing into a central area and Sterling now has almost gone alongside Broya Palmer is the one providing the width on this near side the right Mudrick on that far side the left as Chelsea play from left to right as we look Caicedo wins the ball in the midfield Vandenberg gave it away Mudrick now up against the young Dutchman but he falls over Middlesbrough have it Hatley forward ball slip by Thiago opens up now for Coburn Thiago recovers Coburn now enters the penalty area got a little nudge there by Thiago Silva had he gone down that would have been interesting but as it was he just runs it out of play for a goal kick it's amazing how many times you think one and one Thiago Silva you've got 40 yards to run you should beat him he's 39 and you don't <laughs> he always somehow gets there a little bit of a nudge there just very very clever is that once again how dangerous to Middlesbrough looking to break 
It was a 21-year-old up against the evergreen 39-year-old. Gusto. It's really upsetting that when you're young and that happens. <laughs> Caicedo. Now with De Sassi. Chelsea once again have got every outfield player in the Middlesbrough half. Middlesbrough, though, have defended ever so well in this second period. Mind you, they will not switch off. They know only to their cost about the quality of Premier League opposition, albeit it was a, a deflected goal from Matty Cash at the weekend in the FA Cup, but they scored in the 87th minute. Gusto now with a cross from the right. Might fall towards Sterling. Sterling to Mudrick. Hits it first time. The keeper's lost it again. It was straight at him. And uh, a fumbling Glover eventually gathered the ball in at the second attempt. Glover's gloves are looking a wee bit slippery at the moment. A bit soapy. That's a couple of things. Now, it is actually, as you said, with the conditions. A, it's cold. B, it has been raining and a bit of sleet as well. You wouldn't be surprised. But even so, that's a couple of times he's dropped it when it just hasn't looked that dangerous. I'd be tempted to start to fire in a few more there. What was it that Nigel Martin always used to say about soft hands? I would argue that he hasn't got soft hands the way that they're bouncing out of his grasp. That's what, twice now that he's let one slip. Caicedo, diagonal ball. Gallagher running forward for Chelsea. Left corner of the penalty area. Mudrick picks up the loose ball. Housen just got something on the, uh, and the challenge to stop him. Breaking it up. Now it's with Coburn, who takes it over. Caicedo, though, gets in front of, uh, of Coburn, and Chelsea win the ball back. 17 minutes remain. BBC Radio 5 live. And Chelsea still can't find a way through this resilient Middlesbrough defence. Hackney. Coburn. Caicedo. Referee says no free kick. Has Michael Carrick turning away in protest. Well, Michael Carrick has every reason to be very, very angry there because that was a very clear drag back. The referee's not spotted it. But it's keeping the game lively. I mean, it's, you have to underline it now and again. It's a really good game of football. It's really entertaining. It's enthralling. You do not know which game, way this game's going to go. It's as likely to go 2 0 as it is 1 1. Here is uh, Housen. A lot of space on this near side. If he could have released Engel, it was played behind him. Engel hits it first time for the run of uh, Hackney. Couldn't find him. Palmer brings it under control for Chelsea. And now towards Gallagher. Able to turn and release the ball towards Mudrick. Space for Mudrick to run into as he attacks Vandenberg. Balassar is back in position. Here is Pro with his back to goal. Couldn't hold it up. And Middlesbrough. No, Isaiah Jones has given the ball away. Cole Palmer now for Chelsea. Out towards Gusto. Right corner of the area. Gusto does the little step over. Does the little shimmy. And then rolls it left put it along the ground cleared by Clark quarter of an hour remains on five live Middlesbrough holding on you can hear the crowd's response as they try to keep them going for this last quarter of an hour here is Sterling Sterling with the shots Sterling puts it off target yeah, but it's better by Raheem Sterling there he gets it on the corner there and he's positive about it he's trying to go for that far corner now it's about two feet past but it's it's the right one to go for we should be getting it on target it's one of those ones you've, you've said it yourself keep us in a couple of wobbly moments you've got to ask him a question he hasn't scored in his last 20 semi-finals for club and country Raheem Sterling as we now have 15 minutes remaining the Middlesbrough fans in that vocal end behind the goal of Tom Glover towards our right hand side with the red and white flags flying and the beat of the drum creating a din of a noise can the championship side hold on here is Palmer 10 yards inside the Chelsea half to De Sassi Thiago Silva trots forward Colwell Middlesbrough have had to soak up a lot of the pressure in this second period. Here is Broyer with a layoff towards Palmer. Gusto's ahead of him on the right-hand side. Palmer looks for the run of Sterling. Easily headed away by Dale Fry. Won back by Palmer momentarily. Hackney, good footwork. Releases it towards Coburn. Just showed too much towards Thiago Silva. Sterling coming back. Keeps it alive for Chelsea. Now with that with Gallagher. Mudrick's ahead of him. On that left-hand side. That far side. Four red shirts around the Ukrainian. And Johnny Howard and with the experience takes it towards the corner flag and then clears it doesn't go out of play underneath the feet of Colwell now towards Thiago Silva De Sassi outside the centre circle runs forward 
30 yards out from goal, Broya lays it off, Palmer touches it to Gusto, leaps out of the sliding challenge to an angle, behind for a goal kick, the amount of time Stuart that Chelsea have had the possession, they just can't create the clear openings. No, like I say, Middlesbrough defending really, really well, shifting in this year, but it is tiring like I said earlier on, but they're defending ever so well, but Chelsea are just not threatening the back line in Middlesbrough, it's all sort of in front of them, and that's why I was surprised when they took uh, Macri off, you know, the one who was the one who was getting in behind them and attacking them, but yeah, everything's in front of Middlesbrough, well, I think they're pretty comfortable at the minute. One of the things that you know, I look out for at this point in the game, and you know, who's getting tired? You know, they're having to work so hard, they've made a couple of changes very early on in the game, they're under pressure a lot. Who's looking tired? To be honest, the back line looks fine, most of the midfield looks actually quite well as well. Maybe looking at Crooks getting a little bit leggy just now, and but what can you do? I mean, yeah. if you're Michael, you're thinking, look, how <laughs> many changes can I make, and what have I got on the bench? He's only got that one other opportunity to make a substitution. So he might just wait to, to hold on because uh, if he makes one and then there's an injury, they're down to 10. Here is uh, Caicedo spinning. Releases it to Gallagher. Picks it up 30 yards out from goal. Pods it out towards the right-hand side. Gusto back towards Gallagher. 25 yards out. Middlesbrough have got everybody back behind the ball. So those red shirts are in and around their own penalty area. It's Palmer can't wriggle away from Barlasa. Barlasa's now forward ball. Coburn, who's playing as a midfielder, manages to reach Hackney. Hackney was caught late by Caicedo. The supporters reacted. Michael Carrick, though, a little bit nonplus, out at the referees, letting the game flow. It'll be a Middlesbrough throw in on that far side, the right. We've got just over 10 minutes remaining, and Middlesbrough still lead 1 0, Pat Nevin. And they're still trying to do that when they get the ball. They're very, very deep, but they've still got Jones as the out ball. And that time they tried to go and do it. I got a tackle there, and I think it was Caicedo got a tackle on him there. But every time they try and get it to him. But in the second half, because Chelsea have had the pressure and had the ball most of the time, Jones is really getting involved. So, you know, they want to have that danger. They want to have that release now and again. But you just get a feeling these last 10 or 15 minutes, they're going to be hard sums, hard work for Middlesbrough. It could be a long, hard night if you're a Middlesbrough supporter as well, celebrating this, because this would be a, a famous win for Middlesbrough Football Club in this League Cup semi-final. As uh, Chelsea still trail, just over 10 minutes remaining. It's their sixth semi-final in total. And every time that they've played the first leg at home, they failed to reach the final. But they could be going to West London with a small advantage as it stands. Here is Colwell looking for the run round the back of Mudrick. Cleared away by Vandenberg, the Dutch youth international. Thiago Silva back inside the Chelsea heart. Now with De Sassi. Gusto has stayed out wide on the right-hand side. Sterling now operating in that central area. Caicedo wins the ball against Coburn. An early first-half substitute for the injured Emmanuel Latte La. As Palmer picks it up, will go the long way around. Plays it hard into the feet of Gallagher on the stretch. Couldn't control it. Isaiah Jones tidies it up. And Tom Glover, only three clean sheets in his 11 of previous appearances, clears the ball away for Middlesbrough. Palmer lifts it forward. Chelsea have it once again. Taken on by the left knee of Gusto. On this right-hand side. Manhandled by Engel. Finds Sterling. And it goes too far ahead of him. And out of play for, uh, for a goal kick. And the Middlesbrough fans are happy with that, Pat Nevin. They are. And just the defender, you've got to admire the defender. They have not switched off for a second. They keep on getting into the right positions. The heart has been fantastic. And to be honest, they've been asked a few questions. I mean, Gusto, you've got to say he's been quite good. I mean, he's been really lively trying to get out front but the question we would ask about Chelsea there when you look at the fullbacks and the wingers they're not working together you know you're not dragging players out of each other's way to try and create a space in behind so they can get to the byline so that lack of ability to work with each other to drag players away is very very noticeable Chelsea just now we're on air until 10.30 tonight. Slip in the midfield by Barlasa. Chelsea will profit from that. This is Palmer. Rolls it out to Mudrick. Touches it inside to Gallagher. Now finds Broya. Broya enters the penalty area. The angle is tight. He crosses the ball across the face of goal. 
Did the keeper get a touch to that? Sterling was the player, no, it doesn't. It goes out for a, for a goal kick. Glover certainly was at full stretch as it went across the face of goal and out for a goal kick. Middlesbrough still lead 1-0. Jerome Sterling had got himself in exactly the right position there. I suspect he thinks the keeper's got it. You know, and the ball goes across there and it's put it into that area between the two and he expects the keeper to get a little bit of it. He doesn't throw himself at it. And, you know, a natural centre-forward goes and tries and throws himself at it. I don't think he would have got there. It was probably just a little bit too much pace on it. So, But for Chelsea, much better. Getting in a good area, putting it into the dangerous area between the goalkeeper and the centre-backs. Gordon Smart follows Five Live Sport at, uh, at 10.30. We'll try and bring you the live reaction before then if we can. If not, it will be in the Five Live Football Daily podcast. Incidentally, there are two boxing previews with Steve Bunce looking forward to 2024 that are available on BBC. BBC Sounds, Five Live Boxing, if you're, uh, if you're interested. Certainly, in the red corner tonight, it's Middlesbrough who have the advantage, but they're soaking up a lot of the pressure as Gusto with the cross from the right-hand side. Swept away by Clark. Bouncing ball, eight minutes remain of normal time. Now it's with Caicedo, under pressure from Coburn to De Sassi. Middlesbrough once again. As the ball is played up towards Broyer, just back off a little bit, Broyer. He was looking for a free kick, but it's gone behind for a corner off Housen's clearance. So let's see what they can do with a set piece. I don't, I don't, a few complaints towards the referee there. I can see a great deal wrong with that. As you say, he's let the play roll a little bit. It's, it's been a bit rubbish now and again. But I don't think he's particularly favoured one side over the other, apart from that very early penalty shot. Seven minutes remain. Middlesbrough still lead. Corner kick left-hand side. Palmer to take it. Hasn't been dealt with. Now it has by Housen inside his six-yard area. Right footed. High ball. Out of play. It goes for a throw. Taken off that small white cone. Palmer with the throw. Gallagher diagonal ball. And gathered in by Glover. And he catches it this time. An shame. ironic cheers from the Middlesbrough fans. It's a real shame for them there because, you know, it's a good play, position. You should put a good ball in there. And just Middlesbrough. They're going, holding it there. There was a ball on. The keeper caught it there. Jones was away. He was away in the right-hand side. There was nobody marking him earlier on in the game. They probably would have lumped it up and tried to get it to him. This time, slow it down. Hold what they've got. Since Chelsea were eliminated by Burnley in the fourth round on penalties in 2008 at Stamford Bridge, they've won each of their last 15 League Cup ties against sides from the uh, the lower leagues. They've scored 53 goals in the process, but they're drawing a blank so far here tonight as they look for an equaliser. Here is Gusto. Still, they will press for one, though, but six minutes remain of normal time. Five live and BBC Sounds, 1-0 to Middlesbrough. Thiago Silva outside the centre circle to De Sassi. Forward ball, rolls, bobbled a little bit. Broya couldn't control it. Cleared by uh, Dale Fry, only as far as Mudrick, left-hand side. They've doubled up on Mudrick. And there is uh, Vandenberg, plays a short ball. Mudrick actually keeps it in well. But it bounces off the shins of uh, Sterling. Middlesbrough still can't get the ball clear. Housen gets a good challenge in on Gallagher. Forces him away from goal. Leading with it from the front, leading with experience. And now urged on to keep on going, to keep on ploughing on for Middlesbrough as they defend manfully cross from Gusto on the right Colwell tries to get there first might break towards Broya Gallagher with a shot Broya wanted it to feet and then hammered away by Engel back to the wall of the minute Stuart Downing it is I think it's going to be the turn for the next five minutes to start attack the defence but fair play the middle is with the defending very very well Palmer lifts it forward back there was Dale Fry he's still only 26 he seems to have been around forever Dale Fry made his debut at 17 as Coburn does well pushes the ball past De Sassi oh and then he slips as he tried to think of a cross from the left hand side of the penalty area as Crooks tries to win the ball back in a real old struggle against De Sassi all of a sudden Middlesbrough fans may have thought about a second goal there and he slipped just at the wrong moment under five minutes remain just on the counter attack some tired legs now there for Middlesbrough they try and get back into position as the red shirts have gone forward they committed men forward Broya now for Chelsea Gallagher Gallagher waits for the ball to settle runs forward enters the penalty area chips it towards the far post and 
the service was lacking and it goes out of play actually for a throw over on the far side and they could have another injury Middlesbrough I was saying before about who's looking tired well there's a whole bunch of them looking tired in the last five minutes or so and that looks like a, a little strain groin strain there he's gone down but by pain I don't think he's acting would that be from his slip do you think it, it, yeah it could well be it absolutely could well be if it is the case then he's run a little bit so he's going to have to run it off by the way he's playing the build up to that was absolutely brilliant he held it it had a poor little dummy in as well and it was such a shame for him he slipped just at the last second because he had a couple of players up with him he's a uh, he's a powerful young forward is Josh Coburn comes from D-Dale in, uh, in North Yorkshire he's back on his feet he will not want to come off for these closing stages that is for sure three and a half minutes remain Chelsea had chances in the uh, in the first half they created very little second half Engel races over to this near side keeps the ball in play Michael Carrick told him that he had time back it goes to Clark ball headed defender sees it back towards Tom Glover Glover right footed clears it from inside his penalty area Crooks tries to head it on comes up towards Sterling leaning over him was Fry to head it away Sterling battling for the ball there holds on to it now finds Palmer Gusto's going ahead of him Palmer runs forward for Chelsea now inside to Gallagher turns Colwell joins the attack Gallagher Crooks all action wouldn't be surprised if he has one of those little little switches on the back of his head it's like an action man you know the old eagle eyes that they used to make him he just doesn't stop this uh, Matt Crooks Middlesbrough now their supporters offer the vocal encouragement Cross comes in headed away by, by Clark two minutes of normal time remain the fourth official will be interesting when he holds up the board Chelsea going to make a change as well it's going to be Alfie Gilchrist who's going to be coming on as Chelsea keep the ball but just cannot find a way through I don't know how many minutes will be added there haven't been any injuries in the second half it's kept no. on going just thinking maybe of the, the odd substitutions as the cross comes in from Mudrick you wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than if it was more than I would be surprised if it's more than four yeah yeah four Casado to Sassi Gallagher awkward fall for, uh, for Crooks he's in a lot of pain at the moment De Sassi plays the ball Chelsea play on they're entitled to do exactly that Gallagher out towards Gusto Gusto rolls it into Broya to turn it's cleared away by Clark yeah, Crooks is down one. the referee's got to stop play yeah he's going to stop it just now um, obviously he's worried in case it has a serious injury he stayed down it's one of those ones when if the referee doesn't stop play right away you've got to get up if you can get up <laughs> you must do when you're a, a, a goal up and there's only seconds like you cannot be doing the acting and I don't think he was acting there I think he his body was in an odd position he tried to do a little bit of a you know we're seeing it again here Stuart can you see anything wrong there? <laughs> I've just seen that when I seen the clip back there Crooks has sort of twisted his ankle when he's fell on it so it is a bit of a nasty one I don't think he's, he's play acting but um I just, I just shouting to get up and help the team but when I've looked at it there it looks a bit of a nasty one yeah the Chelsea change has been made Alfie Gilchrist has come on to replace Marlo Gusto at, uh, at right back Brooks is still getting treatment I'll tell you the reason for that Gusto got a little injury before and he started talking about he's trying to hide it for about five minutes or so but uh, that's that's not a change I don't think uh, Portugal would like to have made because uh, Gusto's been quite good down this right hand side but uh, Gilchrist very very popular in his early Chelsea career with the Chelsea fans and he was signed from Queen's Park Rangers youth system at the age of, uh, of 10 they'll be hoping that it's not serious to Gusto Jackson's away at the African Cup of Nations and Kunku's got a fresh injury, a hip problem Chilwell, Chukwemeka James, Fafana, Kukurea, Sanchez Chalabar, Lavia Andre Santos is ineligible Markson is going to go to Borussia Dortmund so they like Middlesbrough are depleted in terms of injury and options as we have four minutes of added on time Middlesbrough still lead by a goal to nil 
and we were right with our assessment yeah. of the, the added on time part. Yeah, I mean you couldn't see it was going to be a huge one because the players have gone on with it and say well done both sets of players, there's nobody rolling about, you know, feigning an injury, nothing like that. The referee said this is going to be one of those games where it's going to let it roll, so if you're not in the ground, you can just stay there. <laughs> Middlesbrough have been awarded a free kick. The cheers will tell you that as the first 60 minutes, the first 60 seconds rather, of the added on four have just ticked by. Some Middlesbrough fans are actually leaving on the far side. I would get it if they were 3-0 down. But your team are 1-0 up. You've got your role to play in the last three minutes to offer the vocal encouragement and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to leave early. Don't get it. It's well, so he may have work in the morning. But, uh, yeah, it's slightly surprising. You want, you, want, you want that last moment when the whistle goes if you want you'd, you'd love that Glover goes long with a free kick for Middlesbrough headed away by Thiago Silva they might be optimistic they might be off to the bar to get the first pint in who knows as the ball is picked up by Caicedo and latching onto it now is Sterling and running forward at pace Sterling running through at the heart of the Middlesbrough defence Clark got just something on it and then it was cleared away by Engel and that was a real Riverside roar to greet that clearance that's brilliant by Clark he had to get that right he had to get something on it he dived in there and he just got enough to slow the Raheem Sterling down Howson makes the challenge Middlesbrough will play two more games before they go to Stamford Bridge Millwall and Rotherham in the championship Chelsea will just have the one match against Fulham before they can rest and recuperate and try and overturn what looks like it's going to be a one goal deficit at Stamford Bridge Stamford Bridge incidentally where they're unbeaten in seven home games but the Middlesbrough supporters inside the Riverside know that their moment is close 90 seconds remain and the red and white scarves are out being swirled around their heads yet again by this Middlesbrough home crowd a sellout home crowd as Caicedo picks it up finds Palmer little flick of the index finger of the right hand by Pochettino he knows where this ball is going but Middlesbrough once again who have been absolutely terrific in their defence back in numbers now with Caicedo just over 60 seconds remain Gilchrist to Palmer still working hard is Barlassa looking to close down every opportunity to Sassi Colwell patiently playing the ball out towards the far side Mudrick with a cross Gilchrist makes the run round the back heads it into the side netting it was never a threat to goal oh it's gone behind for a corner he's getting out got that one right absolutely great defending getting his body in the way and made sure it wouldn't go on target but it must be the last chance for Chelsea by my watch we're inside the last 40 seconds Middlesbrough lead Chelsea by a goal to nil Palmer with a corner kick it's an in-swing and the referee though has spotted an infringement and blows his whistle and Middlesbrough get a free kick and Stuart Downing the home crowd are ready to celebrate it's a great atmosphere isn't it I mean to be fair Middlesbrough they deserved it I mean the second half defending has been unbelievable um, so yeah I, I think it's, it's a good result like I said we wanted them to get a result to take to the second leg to be honest the, the big thing about it Medicate Michael Kerr on Radio 5 Live beforehand said we need the fans to turn up at the right times boy have they done that at exactly the right times would be needed well, I don't know about you two, but I can feel my feet vibrating. And now my ears are pierced, because the Riverside Royal will tell you that is the full-time whistle. And Middlesbrough go to Stamford Bridge with a lead to protect. They've beaten the Premier League side by a goal to nil. Hayden Hackney with a first-half goal. But what a resilient defensive display. Pat Nevin. Yeah, it was. And you're going to be put under pressure. And of course, if you go or go up, you're allowed to go and sit back because you've got that advantage. You know what your shape is, but you need to be a little bit dangerous on the break. And they were dangerous on the break three or four times in that second half. Yes, but it's the road of luck now and again. But you really couldn't say they didn't deserve to get something out of this game. And maybe even they win just for the effort they put in. And just the fact that if you look out there, which players put the most amount of effort into that game? Saints, Chelsea might have had the, uh, the possession. I'll tell you what, but I had the effort, didn't they? They certainly did. You cannot fault them to a tee. Hayden Hackney's only goal of the game after 37 minutes. And to be frank, Chelsea didn't really look like scoring the way that Middlesbrough defended. They were terrific 
off the ball. Michael Carrick will be delighted. It's finished at the Riverside. Middlesbrough 1, Chelsea 0. Steve. What a remarkable noise inside the Riverside Stadium. Down on the touchline, Michael Carrick just shaking hands with the officials. He's just given two big bear hugs. One to his assistant, Jonathan Woodgate, and one to his first team coach, Aaron Danks. The uh, Chelsea players in dark blue have just run over to the far side to applaud their fans. But this stadium is absolutely rocking. Just behind us in the commentary box, there's a, a big photograph of the, the late, great Alistair Brownlee, who was the local BBC commentator to hear for many many years saw every single humongous moment that this football club has ever seen really well I wonder what words he would have found I think he once famously said everyone round my house for a palmo there's going to be a lot of them eaten on tea side tonight I can tell you uh, the Borough players all still out on the pitch here we've got Stuart Downing Ian Dennis Pat Nevin with us inside the Riverside Stadium Stuart this is as special a night as these fans have seen in a very long time unbelievable it's great being here just sat watching the fans I mean the atmosphere it's been amazing and you've got to say the fans have played a big part tonight especially towards the end when the team were tiring they were getting deeper and deeper and they just kept you know a tackle went in and a roar went up and it just gave the players a little bit of a lift and sometimes you know fans you don't realise how much of a big part they play they just give the, uh, the players a little bit more energy and I think you've got to say overall I know the road they look a little bit time of chances but I think they deserve the win the fans are drinking it in Ian and I think the players are as well as they just watch the, the Middlesbrough supporters give them their adulation well this is a Middlesbrough side as well that you know had to make changes in the first 19 minutes through to injury they were already without 12 players before the game and yet Michael Carrick through the adversity his players gave him absolutely everything you cannot fault them for their, their work ethic their endeavour and they were a threat on the break as well they had, they had their moments in the second half but Hayden Hackney this talented youngster with the all important goal eight minutes before half time we were saying beforehand for a lower league side in a two legged semi-final you need to take advantage of your home first leg they had to go to Stamford Bridge with something to protect and they've got that now and also the way that they've played in the second half will give them a lot of confidence for the, for the return leg the uh, chant that the Middlesbrough fans were singing there, I could hear the phrase, words can't describe Isaiah running down the right-hand side. Well, I've got two wingers sitting next to me here at the Riverside Stadium. Isaiah Jones, Pat Nevin. We said before the game, he's going to be important for Middlesbrough if they're going to have success. And it was exactly that. Yeah. Um, well, you'd be an out ball. You know I mean, uh, Stuart said that before it's won the phrase, and Stuart said, right, it's up. He is the out ball. And he absolutely was. And it didn't actually have to be anything complicated. You know, don't, don't give it to him and ask it to beat three players. Just put it into an area, over the top of the defender, and let him go and take it. And he will keep on running. And when he got, when he got to the violin a few times, he didn't panic. He knew what he was doing. He was putting it into dangerous areas, which was maybe the difference between him on the night and some of the Chelsea wide players who were getting into some decent areas, but then weren't picking out players. He was looking to play the right balls and he did it time and time again and he was consistently a danger <laughs> you're talking about uh, the second leg you've got to think Chelsea have got to think about that I mean who do they play there I mean do they play Colwell again do they go and put, I mean I was going to say Gusto Gusto's going off injured there he might not be available by the time it comes round so there's a few problems a few questions for Chelsea most of them they could answer if they had a full complement of players uninjured but they haven't and they need to get through this an astonishing effort from Middlesbrough Football Club. A second tier team. It might just be the first leg, but what a first leg. What a famous night and a famous victory it is for the Teesiders. Uh, we've got lots more reaction to come between now and half past ten. So you'll get 30 minutes of it uh, before Gordon Smart takes over. By the way, lots of stuff going on on, on Gordon's show tonight. Uh, he's going to be on the hunt for the strangest festivals, folk stories and local sports stories stories. I've just read that he's going to be talking about 2023 being the hottest year on record which feels a funny thing to say in the Arctic cold of the uh, the Riverside Stadium here but it will feel warm, it will feel hot for all the Middlesbrough fans in here tonight who are just starting to make their way out. They don't
don't want it. They want to stay here. They want to experience more of it. We'll bring you live reaction as well, I'm sure, uh, from the Middlesbrough manager, and hopefully we'll get Chelsea reaction as well. And let's just check in, though, at the Alexandra Palace. Jamie Broughton's been watching Neil Robertson and Barry Hawkins. And the two-time champion, Neil Robertson, is in trouble here. He now trails by four frames to one. It's Hawkins who's played much the better snooker tonight. He's knocked in breaks at 54, 96 and 48. So Hawkins 4-1 up. Robertson, though, is back at the table in this frame six on a break of 77. So a chance here to reduce the arrears to 4-2. Six is required for victory and to take on Ronnie O'Sullivan. Right, much more reaction from the Riverside Stadium then after the news on Five Live with Nick Hatfield. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. The former head of the post office, Paula Venel, says she will hand back her CBE following anger over the Horizon IT scandal. An ITV drama highlighted the cases of more than 700 sub-postmasters wrongly accused of stealing from their branches because of a faulty software system. Meanwhile, the Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, has met judges to discuss how best to speed up the process of quashing the convictions of sub-postmasters. Nicola Arch is a former post office manager who was wrongly convicted. As she told Five Live, her name has been tarnished by the scandal. When they find me not guilty, that wasn't headlines. Nobody was interested. And all the damage is done then anyway, because it took two years to, for the court to find me not guilty. By then, I'd lost everything and, and my reputation was just nil. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says Palestinians displaced by fighting in northern Gaza must be allowed to return home as soon as possible. Speaking in Tel Aviv after meeting Israeli leaders, he said civilian deaths are far too high. Donald Trump has attended a legal hearing in Washington which is looking at whether he should be immune from criminal prosecution. His lawyers argue he's protected from charges of election fraud because he's a former president. And as a warning, this year could be even hotter than 2023, which has been confirmed as the warmest on record. Data from EU scientists shows the Earth was 1.48 Celsius warmer than the long-term average before humans started burning large amounts of fossil fuels. BBC Five Live, the voice of the UK. Throughout January, Five Live is bringing you stories about the police from around the UK. Policing the UK on BBC Five Live. From New recruits on what it's like to join to how safe people feel in their homes and out on the streets of britain hearing about your experience with the police policing the uk on five live throughout january listen on bbc sounds this is five live sports with steve crossman on five live listen on bbc sounds we are inside the Riverside Stadium on Teesside where Middlesbrough of the Championship have just beaten Premier League Chelsea 1-0 in the first leg of their League Cup semi-final. There are still Middlesbrough fans here in the stadium away to our right-hand side which houses the uh, the most vociferous Borough fans, the Red Faction fan group. They don't want to go home and why would you after a famous night for Michael Carrick's side? The uh, substitutes who didn't get a taste of tonight are just down in front of us having a little cool down and I think everyone inside this stadium needs to do a little bit of that. The rain has started uh, pouring down here. We can just see it in the pitch black night with the floodlights opposite us at the east stand of the Riverside Stadium and this is just the eye of the storm. It's only half time in this tie in Dennis but what a half for Middlesbrough. Absolutely and uh, a Riverside roar greeted that final whistle because Middlesbrough have achieved a crucial first leg advantage both sides coming into this tie depleted by injury but the championship side were dealt with a double setback in the early stages of the game Latte Lath and Bangora were forced off but undeterred Middlesbrough took the lead with Hayden Hackney steering in a 37th minute goal from close range Chelsea really should have scored in the first half that awake was causing problems down the right Palmer was presented with two presents he placed one wide he popped another over in front of a gaping goal from close range but in the second half Chelsea were restricted to few opportunities because Middlesbrough were organised, they were disciplined and that was a very, very resilient second-half performance from Michael Carrick's team. And now, crucially, they've got something to protect.